So before we get into this episode, I just got to take care of a little bit of business. And I'm going to start with a question. Now, if you've been listening to the last few episodes, you probably know where this question is going to go. And uh, this first question was uh, sent in by Joe Hawk, who was a guest on this podcast a few episodes ago, a little while back. Uh, You might know him from uh, bands such as Battle Ruins, A Hammer and the Nails, um, and... uh, a notorious uh, shit stirrer on the uh, on the social medias, uh, but he wanted to know, and I've embellished this and added to it a little bit. But uh, does your ramrod look like a really fucked up, disheveled, hungover Bones Malone the night after a heavy night of partying? Uh, you know, in a weird outfit that, you know, you wake up in a weird outfit and you don't even know how you got into that. Like, so, you know, so does, you know, so going back to the question, if your ramrod looks like this disheveled Bones Malone wearing like a fur or like a really fucked up fake fur or, or a Salvation Army uh, feathered boa, then you're in, some, you're in, you're in for some serious issues, you know? And it could be a public health thing. I don't know. Given that it's August and this extreme heat and humidity, um, you know, there's a, you know, you got a, you got a, you got a microcosm jungle going on down there, a little micro environment of, of germs and nastiness. So uh, you can go to uh, manscaped.com, who happens to be one of our sponsors, and help uh, deforest those areas and clean things up so you have a more sterile working environment, if you know what I'm saying, uh, in the uh, sensitive parts and uh, grundle areas and whatnot. So uh, check them out, manscaped.com. They got a razor called the Lawnmower 3.0 that's uh, scientifically developed to, uh, um, you know, mow down the uh, sensitive areas of a dude uh, without any nicks, cuts, or blood, you know? So uh, it's, it, and it works. It really works. I got one. They sent me one. Uh, I uh, I back it wholeheartedly. And, uh, you know, you, you feel a lot fresher and cleaner down there. They also have a lot of other products that you can check out, uh, you know, um, you know, it, along those lines. They got like a ball toner. They got a ball... Uh, uh, anti-chafing, uh, uh, you know, stuff. They got, they got all kinds of stuff. So check them out at manscaped.com. They also have a package deal called the perfect package where, uh, it's a bundle of all these things that are, uh, and it's already discounted. Um, but if you use the promo code, big truth at checkout, uh, you will get an additional 20% off your order, even if something's already on sale, and you'll get free postage. So check them out, www.manscaped.com, promo code Big Truth at checkout, 20% off your order, even if it's on sale items or those bundles, and you'll get free shipping. Uh, you should also check out chopcult.com. Uh, they are an online resource for motorcycle builders, chopper builders, uh, motorcycle riders of all uh, all backgrounds. Um, they have four, it's an online forum. Uh, and they got all kinds of forums like uh, 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 dedicated to specific types, whether you're into British motorcycles, Japanese motorcycles, Harleys, American motorcycles, uh, choppers, uh, vintage restorations, whatever. There's all kinds of forums on there uh, uh, with a ton of information about motorcycles, tech, tech advice. Uh, there's even an online swap meet so you can uh, buy, sell and trade parts. Um, they have uh, events, an events page, so they list events all around the country or all around the world. Um, they have a, uh, a news, uh, you know, newsletter they send out every week and, uh, all kinds of information and membership is free. So check them out at www.chopcult.com or on all the social medias such as, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, all that stuff, simply at chop cult. Also, you want to check out amertamia.com. A clothing brand, a clothing brand called Amerta, um, and uh, these dudes have a streetwear brand that uh, you know is is backed by uh, real deal street life. And uh, you might have seen the the shirt that says uh, you know stop glorifying rats or uh, uh, intimidate all witnesses, things like that. They get, but they have a whole line of t shirts. Uh, uh, it's a whole clothing situation there. They got uh, socks, they got jackets, hoodies, uh, whatever. They got uh, art prints that you can buy, uh, hand-screened art prints, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. They even got, like, pomades if you're slicking your hair back, you know, doing doing all that shit, you know. Uh, so check them out, www.amertamia.com, which is O-M-E-R-T-A-M-I-A.com, or on Instagram at Amertamia and Facebook. Um and they're another one. 
If you use the promo code Big Truth, B I G T R U T H, at checkout, you will get 20% off your order. So if you order $1,000 worth of things, you'll only pay $800, which means you have $200 to go over to manscaped.com and buy a ball razor, right? And all kinds of other stuff. So, uh, so you know, check them out, amirthamia.com. Also, check out pitchforkny.com. Uh, it's uh, Pitchfork is my boy Warren's clothing company. Uh, very ingrained in the hardcore metal and punk rock scenes over the last couple decades. Um, and he also has a record label, and they put out uh, – a series of like split seven inches with, uh, and these are highly collectible, uh, all kinds of different little colorways, limited colorways. Um, and, uh, you can check them out. Uh, they always have an East coast band on one side and a West coast band on the other, uh, like, uh, rancid and Murphy's law, uh, you know, uh, all kinds sick of it all. You, you name it. Shit. Tara's been on it. Uh, my boys, uh, uh, Thug Riot have been on it. Rancid, I think I said that already. Uh, not, not trying to repeat myself here. I am doing this all off the cuff, as always. So, uh, and I'm trying to get through this in a timely manner. Um, you should also check out Chop Ahead. Oh, so before I forget, PitchforkNY.com uh, on Instagram. It's just at PitchforkNY. Check them out. Um, also check out my motorcycle shop. It's a uh, chop ahead custom cycles. Uh, we are a brick and mortar store uh, where we have a, a showroom, a parts counter. Uh, we got a sh full service shop in the back. So you need everything, anything from an oil change to a full custom motorcycle built. We do it all, everything in between. Uh, you can check us out www.chopahead.com if you're not in the New England area. If you are in the New England area, come on by 13 County Road, East Freetown, Massachusetts. Um, you can call us at 508-995-6764 if you need something custom. or if um, We're set up with everyone. So if you need a part and it's not online, it's not on our website, I can probably get it for you. Uh, so so uh, give us a call or shoot us an email, uh, truththatchopahead.com. And that's about it. Check out bigtruthpodcast.com if you haven't already. We're going to have more stuff coming up on there. And uh, if you don't already subscribe, please subscribe, spread the word, uh, leave a review or leave a comment uh, wherever you listen to podcasts that helps us get the word out more. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate it. I got another fucking cool episode coming up right now. So keep it locked.
Yes, yes. Once again, we have liftoff. I want to uh, thank you for tuning into another episode of the Big Truth Podcast. And today I'm happy to have my old friend of mine, Chopper Dave, on coming out, coming out, broadcasting live to you from uh, Long Beach, California. Actually, he's in Hawaiian Gardens, California. I still remember that. <laughs> yep. I'm in the garden. Yeah, man. Fucking. Uh, th- and I, I remember what I remember about your shop, too, besides it. Being in a, uh, being a cool shop is that you had like a cool uh, Korean barbecue place down the street. Dude, there's Korean barbecue places all around the place. Yeah, but that's that's there's probably six of them within a half mile of my shop. Oh, all right, whatever one we went to was really good. I just can't remember. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, but to see, you got to understand in Boston that's not a thing. Like there's like maybe yeah. one Korean barbecue place in the New England, I guess. You know. Um, but, <laughs> well, yeah, there's a shit ton of them right in my area. Right here. Absolutely. But yeah, so uh, you guys may know Dave from, uh, he had a blog spot back in the day. That was like a big blog. He had, uh, he, he uh, spent a lot of time. He's been what three decades deep in the motorcycle industry. He, he's worked for some uh, places. He yeah. worked for West Coast Choppers at the, the height of that. Um, and he's got an awesome casting company right now where he makes a lot of parts and uh, he's still building bikes and, and uh, doing his thing. So, um, you know, j- if you don't know him and you listen to this podcast, then you got a little bit of catching up to do. But you know what I mean. But it's all right. It's all right. We, we, we'll for, we'll forgive you. Yeah, there you go. Some youngins, you know. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. So I mean, we we known each other a long time. But if um, yeah, why don't you get into a little bit of like how you know, you know a little bit yeah. of your background, like how you got into the motorcycle thing, and and you know, and like, you know, and kind of the trajectory that led you to where you are now. Oh man, I don't even know. Well, I do know, but you know, um, I had some friends in high school that kind of, I started getting the 50 stuff cars and muscle cars and all that shit. And then all of a sudden when I was 18, I got kind of got turned on to motorcycles. I mean, and that's it. And it was downhill from there because I was, (laughs) uh, I was going to college and I dropped out of college to work at a Harley shop, you know, to do parts at a Harley shop. And then I moved to Arizona, went to MMI for a year and a half. And then moved back to San Fernando Valley, where I tried to get a job at all the dealers and couldn't. So I ended up going back to work for the same guy that I'd worked with for a year and a half in part, which was good because I knew him and I, you know, my buddy Dana, who (laughs) I think about it, we've now been friends for 30 plus years, you know, and he's still one of my go-to guys when it comes to bike stuff. Yeah. When you came came back though, you you weren't still on the parts counter though, were you? You were in the back then, right? When you came oh, yeah, back. No, I was in the back. Yeah. 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 But I mean, the first, the first job that I did as a mechanic there was we had some, we had like every pile of junk Ironhead Sportster in the Valley would come into the shop all the time. Well, oh, because, because they're was, Ironheads and they're always in the shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, especially at that time era, yeah. it was like all those bikes were in the 70s and 80s never got taken care of. So they were extra fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there were toter piles of shit, you know? And, um, I remember the first job I did is I was building a wiring harness for a sports search. Super simple, like chopper harness. And, you know, I did it completely backwards and all my wires were too short to the switch and I had to scrap everything I did. And, you know, I just kind of showed me how little you actually come out of school knowing. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you don't, you don't learn anything. You get a basis, but you don't, you only really learn it by doing it. Yeah. You know, and, and, I, and I still that same way to this day, because you don't learn any other way. Yeah. And, 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 you know, um, when uh, a few years ago, when we first opened um, to the to the public, rather than just being a, like mm-hmm. a chopper shop, and we opened up doing parts and service and all that about five years ago, right. our tech was right out of MMI at the time. The the, the mm-hmm. first tech we had, Donnie, he was an awesome dude. Um, mm-hmm. But it was crazy because yeah, that's really all they got time to show you is kind of like the the basics and like the the background and the logistics of things. You can't really do everything. That's he really learned his first well, no, year in the can't. shop, you know. Yeah, you can't, you spend your first years, I mean, four or five years doing nothing but trouble, learning to troubleshoot. Yeah. You know, and there's still stuff to this day that, you know, you, I, I look at or something, I'm like, huh, you know, because there's a million things that can go wrong with all this shit. And there's so much different shit. 
that you don't learn every day. You know, you just got to find, as long as you get the basics of it, then it starts to come easier. You can figure shit out better. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, you come out of school thinking you know all that shit and you just get your ass kicked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the, by the, by the reality, especially at a chopper shop. If you go to a dealer or you're just doing services and shit like that, it's not that bad. But if you like want to have your own shop or, oh shit, dude, no fucking way. Oh yeah. What I was, I ready for the education slash beat down, emotional beat down. I got working, <laughs> learning to work on bikes that way. Oh yeah. I mean, mind you, I had, I had a really good guy that I was working with. Who's like I said, still my friend to this day, <clears throat> you know? So that was a big, you know, big bonus for me, but it's hard. That's a hard way to start it. You know, yeah. I mean, luckily too, it's like I'd spent a year and a half work running parts and being the parts manager at this shop. And that kind of gave me a huge leg up too. Cause I knew what all the stuff was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which is a huge leg up. Cause like, if you just come as a mechanic, you don't know what all the stuff is. It's even harder. Sure. You know, I mean, there's so much shit to know and there's so much different stuff. And, and it's Harley. So, so much shit changed like during a half year or like every two years oh, yeah, or this sure. and that. And so it's like, <laughs> there's a yeah, lot of sure. shit to keep up. And, and, and yeah, it, I mean, that's, that's even worse now with that stuff for sure. Oh, especially now with all like the new, like, yeah. you know, all the, when, when things are all computerized and everything, it's a, it's a whole different game. Like, but, for sure. but one of the things that you tapped on that's super important, I think to, for people to understand who someone, you know, just in case there's someone right now that's thinking of going to MMI or working on mm -hmm. motorcycles, um, you know, coming out of MMI and I'm no diss to MMI that, like I just said, they don't have time to show you everything you really need to learn. They can only show you the basics and kind of the theory behind things. But when you come right. out, like you said, absolutely. You probably be, you're going to be more geared to be able to work in a motorcycle dealership when you're working in a custom shop. All fucking bets are off because you are seeing oh, shit that, that that no dealer would ever take in. So you're seeing the craziest shit. And, it, and oh yeah, I mean you're seeing all the all the custom made stuff and all the non dealer stuff. Yeah, yeah, the stuff that dealers won't touch. Absolutely, is the stuff that you know I spent the first five, four or five years of my of my career doing. Just that stuff, you know, which is changes shit. And then I, I would have liked to have worked to a dealer for a couple of years just to have a more of a background with that solid dealer background. But you know, at this yeah. point, it doesn't really matter. But you know, I would have liked to do that at the time just to get some experience with that on that level. But you know. Yeah, coming out of MMI and going into a custom shop, huh, it's tough. It was tough for me. Oh yeah, and, you know, and but, it's, it's like but, you, you said. Know, I loved it, so I didn't care. Yeah, I mean it, that's the only thing I ever thought about. That's all I wanted to do. You know, once I discovered motorcycles, I you know dropped out of college and boom, I threw it all away to work on motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, we you know? we joke. We always joke like, oh, I, I I threw it all away to do something like this. But you know, it's in jest because we fucking love it. And and there's really well, yeah, no other way. There was no other path that was going to work out. You know, I tried to. Yeah, I, no. I went to school and I went into like a regular job and, you know, it wasn't really a regular job. It was like still working as an anthropologist, which is weird, you know, whatever, like a weird career path. Oh, that's whatever. neat though. I yeah. didn't know that. That's neat. Yeah, and I did That's that for super neat. Yeah, I did that for a while, and and I would do the bike really? stuff nights and weekends, and then it was just like I can't right. even function in the regular world anymore. Like I I I, <laughs> I tried, I gave it my all, and it's like I just got to be yeah. be back at the shop and and, and yeah, function and, functioning in the real world is difficult. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but but and yeah, that's the thing too, and like as my whole path has gone, too, I've done a lot of different stuff. Yeah. But every single thing that I do, no matter what it is, be it taking pictures, writing working as mechanics, all this other bullshit, it's all centered around motorcycles. I mean, everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, I don't, I wouldn't know how, what to do with myself if I didn't have that in my life. Even at the times when I've been in a total slump and I wanted to light everything on fire and sell it all the fuck off. Yep. You know, I still wouldn't, okay, if I did that, then what do I do? Yeah. You know, I, I just, I don't know what direction I'd go. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And then you lately, regret lately, <laughs> lately, I just, lately, I just want to start cooking, but I don't think there's any money in that either. So, yeah. you know, Although it's weird, man, because there's all these like celebrity chefs that come from our backgrounds. Like there's a lot of old punk rock guys that True. are like these big chefs totally. now and whatnot. I don't know what it yep. is. I think, you know, I think guys with, with, I think it's just, I don't know what it is. And I'm not I'm just, I know I'm making a big generalization here, but I think that DIY mm -hmm. ethic follows us into whatever we choose to get into. Like when you came up in those type of scenes, you know? Oh, absolutely. No, I think that definitely is a big part of it for sure. You know, because you just, you want to get, you just jump in and do it. You know, yeah. you start doing it. It's not like, you know, there was no planning on a lot of this shit. You just kind of started doing it and that's what you were doing. Sure. You know, and it's the same way with that, I mean, a lot of people out of that scene, for sure.
And it's like you said, you that's do a, definitely true. You do a ton of a ton of shit, and I think that's why I'm it comes <laughs> No, but I mean, like you I'm, I'm trying you, to do less. But yeah, yeah, I have absolutely. <laughs> But, you, oh, you know, you did your blog, you did your photography, mm-hmm. all the while mm-hmm. still working on bikes, whether it was, like, for someone else or your own shop or whatever. And, uh, right. you know, like, it's just, you know, we always want to kind of have more control over our own shit or, or develop different things. And I'm sure no one showed you, like, I'm sure you didn't go to photography school or to computer programming nope. school to build a blog or nope. any of that stuff. You know what I mean? And, None of it. And you had one of the coolest, like, back in the day of blogs, this is going back into the internet, like, early internet history, you had one of the fucking coolest ones out there. And I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. It's just, it was a known <laughs> thing, you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. you you curated the best kind of collection of, like, old pictures and information right. and stuff. And so, it, you know, everyone loved that, you know? And that was, like, 97, 98. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when that started. And that's the crazy thing, because I remember... You know, this is kind of neat and all, but then all of a sudden I got indexed on Yahoo as a search. You yep. put in Chopper and my thing was the first thing up for like years and it fucking went fucking chao- chaotically crazy after that. Yeah, man. You know, just for that, just, just online with that stuff, you know, because like that was like the thing that was a huge turning point for that whole thing because people actually saw that stuff and there wasn't really any of that stuff on the internet. And there's none of that stuff now, but you know, at the time there was none of that, yeah. none of it at all. Yeah, and that's what I mean. And, and you, it was just you had I the, was doing for fun on the side. Yeah, but you had you had it dialed in right. You know what I mean? Like you had the coolest shit out there. So anyone with any kind of interest in like cool bikes, you know, was gonna uh, uh, find your way to you at that time because, like you said, it wasn't overloaded like it is now either. So uh, oh, completely. Yeah, you're you're a yeah, triple tri- triple OG pioneer of of, of motorcycle social media. <laughs> oh God, that's terrifying! That's a terrifying way to look at it. I'm just playing, dude. I, I knew it would bother you. I knew it would bother you. That's why I said it. It doesn't bother me. I don't care. I know. Yeah, it's not I, know. Fine. I know. You know what I'm saying? This is yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's all good. But dude, I mean, and that's how we met originally. It was on the biggest ball busting forum there's ever ever been in all of history in motorcycle than the 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 fabled fuck board uh back yep. in that same time frame man where if, yep. if if you weren't getting shit on by fucking uh uh king asshole <laughs> then you weren't yep. doing something right you know what i mean Who's, this is very true i love still i love that he's still added on, on instagram too <laughs> uh, fucking oh yeah oh he definitely is still at it definitely you know dave fucking <laughs> awesome dude um yeah he's a good fucker but that was that was such an awesome boy. I I I pine for the days that there there was something like I wish there was something equivalent to that now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it's cool it's, and small. Yeah, and, yeah, I wish there was too. But it's just like everything has shifted away. Like it shifted with forums first. Like the fuck board came out of it's all about choppers, Lynch's board from Iron Horse. Yeah. That's how that started. Is it? Is Nelson started the fuck board after we were all on Flinch's board? Yep. You know, and like with they were talking about all the Iron Horse guys and Fist Tees and all the guys back then, you know, and it all started with Flinch, you know, and then it transferred to the fuckboard and all the same guys pretty much, but you know, that's how it started. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was super, it was neat. It's cool because it was super neat. To think about it too is like, you know, like there's still like guys from that, like my friend Ben in Pennsylvania that was a uh, slate panic mm-hmm. on there or like Irish rich, yeah, all yeah. these guys, every, like uh-huh. guys I still talk to, like, it's crazy. And that was fucking oh, yeah. like 20, 20 years ago. To. Yeah. That was like 20 yep. years ago, man. So fucking bananas. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a neat little core group of the, all those people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which really kind of, it's funny because I told, I, I, all this, cause I've been spending the last four days cleaning because my life is a chaotic mess and I'm over it and I can't function. So, but one of the things I found this morning was one of the original funk, fuck, fuck, choppers and fuck rock t-shirts. That's awesome. It doesn't fit, it doesn't fit me anymore because I never had a 2X one, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. here anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I, I got a closet full of old t-shirts that don't fit anymore, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know, but I can't, but I can't bring myself to throw them away. No, so no. Like that. Because they're all nostalgic. They've got bags full of stuff. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, the only thing I like doing is is handing them on to somebody that would appreciate For it. Sure. Uh, I like doing that, but yep. I, I couldn't just toss yeah. them. You know what I mean? Like no, uh, no, me neither. You know, even stuff it's like I had a oh good no good oh no I was just well, saying, I had an OG I had, a, I had an OG Reagan youth shirt nice that I bought back in the day yeah and it was a medium huh, right? yeah I can never yeah, yeah. wear a medium again and I ended up giving it to my buddy Billy T one of the guys in our club in Iowa you know and it fits him because he's a skinny motherfucker yeah. But it was just like I was so stoked to give it to someone that appreciated it who would actually wear it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that it would be back so, in use. Yeah. Needs, 
Yeah, 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 for sure. Instead of just sitting in a pile of shirts that I wish I could wear. Cause I can't yeah. <laughs> things, <laughs> things that you're just cutting out and making back patches out of or something, you know? Oh, totally. <laughs> but, totally. But, yeah, so, you know, like, you know, I know you got into, you know, like you said, you – you got into bikes and then you went to MMI, but like, what got you mm-hmm. more into like, like the chopper or like the custom bike, you know? I, and I know you like all kinds of things, but like, what kind of led you down to like the I custom mean, road? I don't know. I mean, just kind of, I mean, I was initially just obsessed with like fifties bikes, like stock fifties bikes. And then mm-hmm. I started reading more and seeing more stuff. And you know, I, it's funny you mentioned that because I've thought about that recently is I don't know what the turning point was. Cause there was like a turning point where it went from like stock bikes to like cut downs and bobbers and bob jobs, shit like that. You know, like yeah. early fifties custom. When I started like kind of doing more, seeing more of it, like collecting old magazines and all kinds of shit. Then you start seeing like the early cut down bikes. And they were like, you know, the quote unquote bobbers today. Cause a bobber today isn't a bobber in my, yeah, yeah, that's I, a whole other story. Yeah. And I know you agree with me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, but it just kind of, it started, it kind of started shifting, you know, and it just became, started becoming different. I started to do more, all this crazy 50s related stuff with like 16 inch front tires and no fenders, which no one was doing really. And they did that in the 50s, but no one really did it anymore for yeah. a long time, you know? And it's just like, just, just kind of stripping down stock bikes, you yep. know, just to, to keep most of the stock stuff without going to a 21, which is fine, of course. But, you know, at the time, it was just kind of, kind of started going that direction. Sure. You know, and then I had a, a pan head at the time and, you know, we had, you know, a flat rear fender and 16s front and rear and no fender in the front and a painters. And, you know, it was just, I look at it now when it was kind of sort of a half ass version of it. But yeah, that was, you know, 30 years ago. Sure. You know, yeah. I do it same, but different now if I wanted to go that direction. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and, 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 you know, the same thing, if I look at some of the early bikes I did, I'm like, all right, the, the kind of, so it was kind of there, but I would do things a lot mm-hmm. different now, man. <laughs> right. Of course. Of course. But I, I kind of agree with you, man, too. Like, well, I don't kind of. I definitely do. Like, there's nothing like a stock, like, 50s or early 60s bike that's just kind of, like, stripped down. And oh, yeah, for still, sure. That's, no, like, I, yeah, you'll that's... never not be fucking cool, dude. You know what I mean? Like, that's. Oh, for sure. Oh, Absolutely. I mean, that's that's still the coolest shit to me. The, you know, everything 57 and earlier, so it's rigid. Yep. You know, in, in, you know, stock form or in just basically cleaned up, stripped down form, you yep. know? without saying anything about how full custom stuff's awesome too, but you know, the stuff, the simple removal of parts in order to streamline, make it lighter, make it faster, whatever, you know, is the coolest shit yeah. to me, you know, yeah. and it always was. Yeah. I mean, cause they had it pretty, you know? they, they had the look pretty good, man. You know what I mean? Stock like, and it's like you said, if you just, oh, you just yeah. took the front fender off and cut the fr- rear fender down and did a couple of, get, yep. got rid of some stuff that you didn't need and, you know, whatever, and put yep. a different seat, whatever. It, it just made it fucking, it was just fucking, those are yep. perfect. I mean, early, perfect early like with the fifties and sixties, the early sportsters too. I mean, those are like the raddest little bikes that just take all the junk off and just ride them. Oh yeah. Know? Yep. You know, they're just bitching. Same with the Charles Triumphs and all that stuff. And it's all like just simply stripping stuff down. It's just still the cleanest, neatest way to go with that stuff. And that doesn't involve you building a ton of shit or getting a ton of shit either, you know? Yeah. Well, it's if, like it was always, it's always the dream to get to start with something that's perfectly original, all the original shit, and then start taking stuff off. Yeah, yeah. You know? That gets hotter really and hotter. Yeah. Stuff up. Hotter and For hotter sure. nowadays, though. You know what I mean? You, you, oh, yeah. You, usually starting from now. a shitty pile of shit that you got to fucking make into it <laughs> oh absolutely i mean it's so hard it's so different now oh yeah you know i mean all this stuff's worth all this crazy bullshit that wasn't worth anything is worth a fortune now yep you know not just the way it is but you know it's crazy how fucking expensive some stuff is you think about you know? even in the time frame that we've been in the bikes you remember the days where you, mm-hmm. could, buy, you could buy knuckleheads for nothing because no one wanted them you know what oh I mean? yeah and I wish I, I, mean, I, have, I wish I, have, I had some money back then to do that. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish I did too, but I never did ever. Yeah, you know, and it's like I remember. It's I have a good good one too from the shop at <clears throat> Vic Custom Cycle that I worked at in Reseda at the time before he, or I'm sorry, in Van Nuys before he moved to Reseda. My buddy Dana that I worked with, who's my long year, you know, thirty plus year friend, it was like a good story of that. We had a guy come in. I think I was off for the day, or off for the day or something. A guy came in with I guess a big twin flathead, like I don't know, like a forty one. I think it was. All basically original, but a rolling chassis and the motor was out of it. But it was all kind of there, right? Yeah. 
And this guy comes in, hey, I need to sell my bike. Blah, blah, you know, fuck some crazy speed story. Who knows, right? Sure. But he came in, needed to sell his bike. And, you know, I guess he wanted four grand for it, which was a lot of money at that time for something like that. Yeah. You know, and Dana had offered him like two grand. He's all, fuck you. That's fucking bullshit. Blah, 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 blah. You know, fuck you. I'm leaving. Okay. So he leaves, right? So two weeks later, he shows up again. Hey, man, I forgot that bike. You, you still want to buy it? He's like, yeah, but I don't have two grand anymore. You know, so we ended up buying all this shit for 1200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all, every bit of it was the original Holly Davidson. All the sheet metal, the fenders, the frame was like this absolutely cherry frame, cherry knuckle frame that you never see now. Yep. You know, and it's like that kind of shit would happen, not on a regular basis, but pretty often. Yeah. You know, where you just pick up shit like that for nothing. Yep. Because people just, it just wasn't worth it then. You know? No, I know. It, it, and it's all just fucking crazy now. I mean, once in a while you hear about something crazy or you, you stumble across a, like a good deal, but it ain't, it ain't semi-regular, right? Regularly Oh, no, anymore. it's not, it's not, it's not common. It's not it's at like all. Once every couple of years, you're like, oh shit, yeah, fuck yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but then, but that's about yeah, it. Yeah, but like you'll, you'll stumble upon it, then it'll be like, you don't have any money that week or whatever. Yeah, yeah, For yeah. all the stars, all the stars to align, it's always yep. way harder. Yeah. You know, yep. But it does eventually happen and that, some here and there. And there's another kind of hidden gem for someone who's looking to get into the motorcycle industry. Your money is going to change week to week so much. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So one sure. week you're like, dude, I'm fucking rolling. And it's like the next week you're like, where did all that go? And you don't got much to show you for got, it after that. It's just paid you bills. Got that right. You paid bills. That's about it. Like, and, yep. uh, uh, and, and you just got to hope the cool shit comes in when you have that little wad with you, you know? For sure. But, for sure. Hopefully you can turn it into a way to turn into more money. But that doesn't always happen. <laughs> yeah or yeah i don't know and then do you do you have like the problem where like when you take in cool stuff that you know you could kind of turn around and and do some work to and be able to flip it for more money sometimes you just end up like you just keep wanting to keep stuff or you are you beyond that stage well i used to want to keep everything yeah <laughs> but over the past couple of years i've sold a ton of shit that i've had just you know i'm not going to get around to it i'm not going to do it i'm never yeah. you know it's just too much stress at this point and it's just like Especially now when I'm just trying to simplify, it's like I have my FXR that I'm building and I have another project bike I'm going to do after that. But that's as far as I'm thinking right now, you know, and yeah. both of those are Evo powered bikes. I could care less at this point. Sure. You know, the right thing comes up to me. Sure. But, you know, at this point, I'm just I want to finish my FXR that I'm building. And then I have another 107 inch bridge that I want to do after that. So, oh. yeah. you know, I'm not really holding on to that kind of stuff anymore. I'm trying not to at least. <laughs> well, you, you, you still have Super Freak though, right? No, I sold that. Did you? Wow. I, sold it, I sold it after my, my accident, yeah. Wow. Oh. Vincent Gallo owned it. Really? Yep. That's cool. It's, it's that's a crazy story. Super st cool. He's a, he's a he's a neat fucking dude. He's completely out of his mind. He's awesome. Yeah, you can tell. Like I don't know him personally, but you can just tell by his yeah. uh, his 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 body of work that he's a fucking probably oh, yeah. pretty out of his fucking mind. He's he's awesome. He's a fucking super neat guy. Cool. We talked, I guess, right before COVID hit, because he's living in, the bike's in Tucson, and he's living out there, I guess, part of the time, but he was going to be coming into town, but then COVID hit, and I haven't talked to him, but yeah, he's a pretty neat guy. Cool. And he rides it, still looks exactly the same. Cool. You know, he rides it, he rides it all over Arizona, so he's stoked on it. So that makes right. me happy that it's getting ridden. So. Cool. Hey, yeah. would, would I'd you... love to still have it, but at the time, I just got in that accident, and yeah. it's like, you know, shit was piling up, but it was just like, you know what, I right now it's got to go. I can build another one. Yeah. And, and will I build another one? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and this isn't a, a like a, a like a like I'm not saying this from a disrespectful place, but at least it's still mm -hmm. here and you could go see it or ride it if you wanted to. It's not oh, like in Japan. Sure. It's Absolutely. not in Japan or like or yeah. like Sweden or somewhere crazy yeah. where you can't really get to it. Or New Zealand yeah, or whatever, sure. you know what I mean? So Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's still here. Cool. Yeah, and he's super fucking stoked on it. So that makes me super happy. Nice, man. Nice. So, yeah, it's good shit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I still got my knuckle. I mean, I've got a Triumph flat track bike, and my knuckle is basically set up for flat track racing, but it's hanging from the ceiling in my shop right now. So, you know, that's and the turbo bike's on, and I'm just, you know, I just I slowly work on my FXR, but I keep complicating that every other day. So, <laughs> complicated by want, no want to change no, things or or, or oh, just new yeah. ideas. I mean, I'm building a, I'm building a twin carb 107 motor for it, and. I have all this crazy bullshit and I keep making parts for it from scratch and it's just, you know, it'll, it'll eventually get done, but it's just yeah. complicated, you know, and I don't want to make any money working on that shit. No, I hear <laughs> you. you know, yeah. so. 
that's and at the, the end thing. of the day, so many, so much time. I just want to fucking go home. Yep, I get you know? that. Man. I don't want to. I don't want to be here all the time anymore. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, and that, that's that, what it is. Hey, for everyone listening that wants to get in the bike business, that's another thing. You know, by the time you, especially, I, you know. I know California has a little bit better weather than us, but like right now we're in the nineties, high nineties, humidity, hundred mm-hmm. percent humidity. At the end of the day, like I don't want to go work on my bike in the corner after we've been, we just did a full day at the shop. Guess what? I'm going home, taking a shower and shit. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it, yep. you, it, with age that, <laughs> that, that, uh, youthful vibrance, I get what I, but I am, I'm not, I, I guess I'm overstepping a little cause once fall hits and it's nice and crisp and cool, I'll stay in the shop all mm-hmm. night again. But during like the inclement yeah. weather, fuck that I'm out. <laughs> yeah, no, my, my shop is, in the winter, it's super cold. In the summer, it's super hot. But it really hasn't been that hot yet this summer. Yeah. You know, knock on wood. Cool. It's humid right now because I, I don't have, I shut the fans off so you couldn't hear them while I was on here with you. And it's rather warm in here right now. But that's okay. <laughs> it's the sacrifice. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the sacrifice. Um, oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> dude, so, uh, you know, like, you, you know, we talked a little before we started hitting record. You said, you know, mm-hmm. you've been there about 15 years and you're doing a clean out just to yeah. kind of simplify things. You must be digging up all kinds of fucking awesome rad, like old shit. Yeah. Like, not really. I mean, no. yeah, the fuck t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, sometimes, but like a lot of the good stuff, it's like if I wasn't keeping it, I sold a lot of that stuff over the past couple of years. And, you know, I'm just really trying to simplify it because I just have so much on my plate. Yeah. I have a bunch of bike builds and just all this part stuff and I'm doing the blasting now and it's just like I'm doing like motor builds and this shit and I'm fucking behind on fucking everything. Yep. It's like all the stuff I'm supposed to be shipping, it's going out way later than I want it to, and people are pissed at me. But, you know, I'm like, I'm trying to get all this shit done. It's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's my fault because my organizational skills are awful and my time management skills are awful, and they always have been. You know, but it's just like, just trying to get to a point with the shop where I can walk in and not immediately be annoyed at what kind of a mess this is or how unorganized that is. You know, just something to make it a little smoother so I can focus a sure. little better and get shit done better, you know? Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm not taking on any bike work at all right now. I'll take on motor, motor transition, stuff like that, but I'm not taking a whole motorcycle in at all right now. Yeah. It's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got to get the bikes that are in here out. Some have been here forever. You know, I got long, long term full builds I'm doing and it's just, you know, it's, it's just, I'm just in kind of a spot now where all I want to do is simplify and just push everything out the door and light everything on fire. But you know, obviously I can't do that. And obviously yeah. I don't really want to do that, yeah, you know, but yeah. it's just, you know, you just get, you go up and down with that stuff and you know, and there's like, I'm not really in a slump right now, but cause I've had some pretty big slumps where I wanted to say, fuck it and do something else. But you know, that's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's me blowing smoke out of my ass thinking that I'm going to find something else that I'd be happy doing. And I don't think I'd be able to, yeah. you know, but I'd like to get to a point where I'm really just doing parts and blasting yep. and you know, the occasional bench work stuff. Sure. That's what, that's like my long-term goal. Once these bikes are go, it's like, you know, I'm hopefully it'll be the point where then I can put more time into all of the other stuff and all the other stuff, you know, works pretty good. Cause I have a ton of parts I'm working on, you know, and it's just like getting time to finish working on them. You know, I've had a twin cam, a uh, thin cam cover that I've been working on for a long time now. And it's just, I need to get someone in here with a Dyna with a thunder header so I can test fit one with a tight pipe, you know? Yep and check about clearance and all that. And then I can actually start selling them. But, you know, just getting to that point has been just getting to the point where I'm at. I needed someone to come in with a test bike. The test fit is like, uh, okay, I got to do this and this and this and this before that can happen. You know, sure, sure. you know, and I'm just trying to do less. I barely shoot. I, I mean, I, there's no magazines anymore. So I'm not writing for anybody anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm not really, sh- I don't really, I don't shoot any magazine stuff anymore. You know, I rarely shoot the girl thing. Even though I'd like to shoot that more. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. I like to do more of that, but that that has a whole nother breed of problems going along with it. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you know. But you know, I mean, I'd like to. But I was thinking, you know, because like my daughter and her boyfriend came and repainted my bathroom, totally cleaned my bathroom and repainted it for the hell of it. And I'm like, wow. So now I'm cleaning everything. I'm going through everything and throwing shit away. And I'm like, awesome. That was like an awesome push just to get me to spend four or five days just cleaning, and organizing. So I can try to get back on track a little better, you know, just so it isn't such a strain on my brain. 
Yeah, man. Like it is now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the, you know? the end of the day, we did kind of a good clean out in our shop uh, uh, mm -hmm. in the last six months. And it's mm -hmm. not, a, not a huge overhaul, but just like kind of a go through general right. cleanup. And that's made things right. so much better. And, and like, and it's weird, like when clients like come in and stuff too, they're like, wow, look at mm -hmm. this place. It looks fucking awesome, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And they're stoked yeah. on it. And it, it just makes it easier to, to, to get shit done because there is something right. to like, you know, like like functional for lack of a better word, like feng shui or whatever to, feng to, shui. to yeah, you, you sure. know what I mean? Like, because you, yeah. you, you can be more productive when things are a little more in order than when it's just like right. fucking madness, you know? And, uh, Oh yeah, for sure. You know, when I get, and I get caught up and I get sidetracked and I'm ADD weirdo and it's sure. like, I start this and then I start that and I start that and I start that all at the same time. Yep. And I, I'm like, I, I'm trying to stop doing that. I'm trying <laughs> to stop doing that and try to focus on, getting to a finish point where I can clean up from it instead of leave the mess and then start another mess and start another mess. You know what yep, I mean? I get it. Cause it's just, you know, it's like right now it's like my toolboxes are clean. The main benches are clean. Two of the lifts I've, are totally cleaned off. I have another one to do. And then I have like a whole thing that has all my spray paint and all that shit in it where I'm going to throw everything away that's in there and start fresh with that. And like, you know, once all that's kind of done, it's like I can walk in the shop and see under the benches, see all the buckets. A buddy of mine just moved back down here from, he moved out of state and he moved back and he brought me a shit ton of bins and I've been fucking boxing everything. And I'm like, I fucking love it. Yeah. You know, just cause I can, just cause like I have one bike on the lift in front of me right now and like all the parts were piled on the lift and now they're all in a box under the lift and the lift is clean. Yep. You know, and it's that little thing that makes such a big difference in how I see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's not, I don't, I don't see chaos. It's yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, it's cast everywhere, but you know, yeah. it's that kind of stuff, you know? So that way I can focus and get back on track doing stuff, you know, sure. it's hard. So were you saying that, um, after all this, you're going to just concentrate more on parts and then a little bit of bench work and, and blasting, but you, you, you sound like a, were you saying you didn't want to get into like full bike builds anymore? Well, yeah, I don't really want to do any more bike builds. I mean, I probably would, but yeah. you know, it'd have to be just one. <laughs> sure. Cause I think I have three, three or four going right now and it's just, you know, too much that stuff's hard because you, you know you don't make any money from that stuff yep. you know you can never really charge for the hours you have in it and it just you know and at some point it just becomes something that pushes you the wrong direction and that i don't want that yep i want the stuff i'm working on to make me want to do it to make me happy with it you know and i'm kind of not really there right now but i have a couple of builds i'm doing that i'm super stoked on but it's still you know there's so much other chaos around that i can't really look at it and see it for what it is without seeing everything else i have to do yeah you know so i'm really personally working on all my time management and just trying to trying to not push through so many things at once it's like i make a list in the morning of what i absolutely have to get accomplished today and i don't make a list beyond that i don't i don't make a list i get all that shit done then i'll think okay what needs to get done and then i work on that stuff you know yep. instead of overloading me with a list with 50 fucking things on it yeah, you know because yeah, yeah. then it just that's just overwhelming and yeah then you look at the list and all you want to do is fucking I, burn it <laughs> yeah I, I walk in the shop and i want to turn around and walk out of the shop but i don't i don't want to feel like that yeah, you know? yeah. especially when it's your shop I, you know what i mean yeah for sure for sure but then again if i was working for someone else they'd be telling me what to do yeah yeah and then i wouldn't have that problem but they'd be telling me what to do <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> which is which is the which is the other problem in itself you know sure so yeah it is what it is but yeah everything you know for the most part, it's okay. I mean, when I was more caught up on all the shipping stuff and all the parts stuff that I'm working on for people, but it always ends up working itself out. So, you know, you, so, oh, go ahead. Hmm. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, you had brought up something a little while ago, like, you know, I know you had been shooting uh, for a lot of magazines um, and now there's no magazines, like... Uh, like, what do you, what do you see as like an outlet? Like, like I, I, I don't know if it's because of my age or just what, or just that I, I, I have a thing for, for, for material things, but like, I don't get the same joy of, uh, you know, looking at, um, stuff online. I do, you know, like, you know, when I see rad pictures of rad bikes or rad right. things, I get stoked, Right. but I like so much prefer to have like something in my hand that I can flip through, um, you know, like, absolutely. And I and, couldn't agree more. And I feel like the, and like, you know, even things like there's motorcycle magazines, you, you know, I just remember being so stoked and chomping at the bit for the next issue of whatever magazine Always. was coming out. You get it. And you'd be like a kid reading it cover to cover and looking at shit and like, yep. like really looking at the bikes and trying to find shit in the yep. bikes. And, you know, um, 
I, I, I miss that. And, 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 it, you know, all, you know, so many, you know, it's cool because there's a lot of like smaller independent magazines that are keeping it going and doing things. But like, right. what do you think is going to replace that? Or, or will anything replace <laughs> Man, that? I don't, I don't, what can, I don't think it yeah, can. I know. You know, I don't think that was, I was funny because I was cause like one of the things I was doing is I have a loft in the shop and I've been clean, organizing stuff up there and I have thousands and thousands of magazines. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I have all these Japanese magazines and foreign magazines and early media writers and tons of old iron. I just, oh, this tons of shit. Right. And I'm like, it's all like, it's just like, there isn't any of that anymore. You know, it's like once in a while, I don't have in a while, but like a year ago, I'd walk into a Seven Eleven that still had a magazine rack. Yeah. And there'd be an outlaw biker on it. And yep. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was so stoked just because it still existed. Yep. You know? And it's just like, it, you know, I don't know. And it bums me out. And I, that was, I totally remember that. I mean, I remember you, you'd find like a certain liquor store that carried Iron Horse, like back in the, back in the nineties, you know? Yep. Like, you, and you'd go to that liquor store. There's the only one that had it. Cause other, other places wouldn't have it. You know, you could always find easy riders and like some of the other magazines like that. But like Iron Horse was like the, the top, the real chopper magazine, you know, in the nineties for me, Yep. you know? And it was like, and I'd offer you too, obviously uh, for sure. You know, sure, it's yeah. just like, I remember all the rec- all the rec- the liquor stores that would have it, you know. And then like slowly, all the newsstands started disappearing, you know. And they really, I mean, pre two thousand, when I lived in the valley, there were a million newsstands in the valley, you know. But I moved to Long Beach. And I went to work for Jesse. There's no newsstand in Long Beach, like there were in the valley. You had mm-hmm. Tower Records, which had an insane magazine section, but somehow it was different because it was a record store. And the newsstand was like just magazines, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it was such a big deal to go to the newsstand and, like, see the Hot Rod magazine and all the bike magazines and, like, you know, all the different types of bike magazines. Like, a good newsstand would have all the foreign magazines, you know? It's yep. like, that was such a huge thing. And, yeah, it's all gone, dude. It's fucking weird. There's nowhere to buy magazines. And there's, like, a hand, yeah, yes, there are a handful of small, you know, private, like, small run private magazines, all the chopper magazines, like Dice and Greasy, all that stuff now, you know, which is cool. And I'm stoked they're still doing it, but. I miss like the regular magazine and I don't think, I don't know if that's ever, that's never going to come back. Yeah. Because there was nothing that replaced it. it. Like the, like, you know, online stuff, whether it's like social media sites, like the closest things are like now or what, like, like uh, Facebook groups or like Instagram pages that are just like aggregate pictures that they take from all over. Like that's really all there is. But even, but even like online with like Facebook groups and all that, there is no, there are no real forums like there used to be. No. You know what I mean? And this like, like even in the, like the, the early 2000s, there was like the, the Iron Horse Forum, and there's like a like chopper whatever. I think what it was called. There's like a bunch of chopper building like forums. People ask questions and whatnot. But like, I don't even know if any of that shit's still there. Yeah, outside of like you know? Chop Cult, I think that's kind of there's not yeah. really that many. You know? Yeah, there's only really a handful of them. Yep. It's so weird. It is crazy. And it's such a drag because that yeah. was the whole magazine thing was such a big deal. Yeah. It's such a big deal to get your stuff in magazines. And like, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and like now it's like your picture's online. Okay, everybody's picture's online. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, you can have a photographer like, come out. You could you could go shoot something right now and, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, clean up the picture, do whatever you do to process it and put it mm-hmm. online to the world yep. in like seven minutes after you took the fucking thing. Yep. And, uh, and it's like that's what there is now. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, it's like, when I've kind of been sort of a Instagram hiatus lately, <laughs> even though I really shouldn't be because, you know, that's like the only way I can market anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is crazy to me that that's like the one thing. Yeah. You know, because it's like, I, you know, I make, it's like I go to the foundry and I come back and I take a picture of all the parts and, you know, people might want to buy stuff, Yeah. you know, but like if I don't do that or if I don't, you know, um, put pictures up and shit like that, people just, it just doesn't happen. It's the craziest thing. It's become so, like, single-handedly controlling all of it. Yeah. It's weird. Because you can't advertise in a magazine anymore. Yeah. No, I you know? know. It, and it's like, well, what do you do? And, like, people don't read in magazines about what's going on with you. People don't look in magazines about the, you know, the, the your trip, your, you know, run to the river run or whatever, you know. Yeah. Your Sturgis last year in a magazine. It's all online instantly, you yeah. know. And it's, I think it's really taken a lot away from it. it has you know, and, and I think part of it too, because there's no article that accompanies it. You know, it's the picture, yeah, 
And then like a couple of yeah. words like, oh, this is my boy Jetty, uh, Jesse's bike that he built in his basement. Right. And there's like 10 words right. and that's it. Like, because you can't, no one's going to read a whole article on an Instagram, you know, like right. uh, uh, on an Instagram post or whatever or whatever, you know. Right. And so you, you, sure. you miss a lot of the context of it as well. And, uh, and uh, For sure. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. It, 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 it's, 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 it's a drag. It bums yeah, me out. Yeah, it's definitely I, something to mourn. That magazine thing, it's funny because I hadn't really thought about it that exact way, but it's totally, I remember about every month going to the newsstand on Van Nuys Boulevard and Ventura Boulevard and digging through all the shit and pulling all the magazines and spending hours looking at all that shit, you know? Yeah. Like the hot rod magazines, the car magazines, the yeah. motorcycle magazines, the chopper magazines, you know, it was all there. And now it's just, it's all gone yeah, and it's all you kind of lose the editorial comment content that way because yeah. it's like all those magazines had like an agenda you know i mean not like i don't mean that in a bad way yeah, like yeah. the government but they all had their own huh. slant or view of things and but they kind of totally pushed like yeah. yeah like like iron horse was you know anti all the main chopper shit all easy rider shit you know and easy rider shit was the party Woo, you know that yeah. whole deal they all had totally different takes on it and you could really but if you're looking at the pictures you would know that but you'd go and you'd fucking get these magazines, you'd read everybody's shit in the magazine. Yeah. And it would, you know, it really would change the way you look at everything. Sure. Where now so much of that's gone. And I feel bad that all these kids are building choppers now. <coughs> Excuse me. Without seeing any of that, any of that kind of perspective stuff, you know? Yeah. Because well, they see the bikes, but there's so much more going along with it than just the pictures of the bike. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> And, Does that and, make sense? Yeah, oh, no, absolutely. And I miss just some of, like, the little fucking, you know, like, not the controversy, but, like, the back and forth, like, the jabs, like, you know, right. like, like you know, like, you know, the, and Dave Snow and the Iron Horse, they were known for that. Like, they were just shit-talking, like, other shit, like, you know, the whole flip the patch, they would shit-talk Harley, they would shit-talk other magazines or whatever, you know what I mean? And it was like, but it was like you said, it was like, you know, every magazine was its own little view and culture in its own, you know, and, 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 for sure. and, and, for sure. and, and, and like kind of harbored that, you know, and it was cool. And right. dude, there is, I still, I'm lucky in that there's a newsstand like a mile up the road from me right now. There's, it's, it's called yeah, but what, news what's break. On it? Well, that's what I was just going to say. The last time I went in there, dude, it was so sad. Uh -huh. Like, cause you know, uh -huh. they used to have like a whole section, like, you know, like two whole rows of shelves that were like mm -hmm. hot rods and two that were motorcycles. Right. And now it's like so condensed. There's like probably like seven or eight right. titles for everything. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, right. and the whole custom automotive genre, you know, um, <laughs> right. There's still other yeah, I mean, stuff. There's still yeah. stuff. There's still stuff at like Barnes and Noble. Yeah. And like the little tiny newsstand that they have, but it's, you know, a, a tiny fraction of it. Yeah. Be. Yeah. It, you know, and there's no, and there's really no, it would cover all the bases before all the different types of magazines, you know, and now it just doesn't. Yeah. You know, it's just I, like a super narrow view and, you know, it's a bummer because there's so much neat shit that was in all that shit that people just are, don't get to see now. Yeah. You know, it's like my whole take on like my 17 year old son is like, you know, he doesn't do anything really. I mean, he does, he skates and, you know, all kinds of shit, but it's like, there's so much shit that we did when I was his age that you just can't do now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. All this shit. I mean, just going out and doing shit, you just, you know, just going skating and being gone all day with no phone, no nothing. And it's like, that was so much fun and so different than it is now. Yeah. You know, I know that's a whole nother direction to go, but no, you know no, what I mean? No, it's no, that's like fine. Yeah. the whole, everything is so different now. It's all getting like homogenized down to this one level of bullshit that has no depth to it. You know what I mean? Yep. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. And it's just like, I, I, I miss that. And I'm sad for like kids now, you know, that like get into the chopper scene that learn all about choppers from Instagram, you know, cause yeah. there's so much more to it, you know? Oh, but yeah. then again, the flip side of that, it's like, there's so much chopper history shit that no one had ever seen before that people see now because of the Instagram, like oh, Instagram yeah, yeah. or the internet. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it goes both ways, but yep. it's, you know, it's, 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 I miss magazines for sure. Sure. But you, you know, know, and I remember when I, my eyesight first started going and I couldn't read magazines really well and it was so frustrating. And I remember like when I finally got my first pair of glasses, I'm like, Oh my God. And I spent, I went through like stacks of magazines that I had, you know, it's like read again, just without an issue. Like looking at your phone, it's lit up, you know, but like, yeah. The magazine isn't so it's like it was i remember i was so stoked to go through this huge stack of magazines and like i don't want to get rid of all my magazines because it's like no that's just like a lost thing you yeah. know it's like a lost thing that's just going yeah. away it sucks because i was a, i think that was a huge part for all of us at that time period yeah man because there were so many different magazines and so many different outlooks i mean oh fuck i mean you compare like the iron horse to cycle world to 
Easy Riders to Outlaw Biker to yeah, you know, American Super Iron, Cycle. It's uh, all yeah, yeah. totally Ironworks. I mean, they're all yeah. totally different accounts of the same scene, and it's so cool because they all looked at it so differently where it gives you a much broader spectrum of what's really out there compared to now. You know, yep. Now you look on you know the internet and you think every fucking dude has a knucklehead and you know <laughs> yeah. yeah there's a lot of dude with knuckleheads out there yeah, but yeah. there are not that many knuckleheads out there you know I it's know. just like it's weird i know it seems like there's more knuckleheads now than there was you know back then for sure like it, it's like what? i think there are definitely more than there were on the road <laughs> yeah <over> yeah <laughs> yeah there's a, a lot of ones that that were sitting in barns and basements or back out on the road which yep. is, is is a good fucking thing man right because you know oh, better absolutely. than me like for sure when something just sits that's when everything starts to go bad with it you know so if it's moving and, and nah, running, knuckle, knuckleheads are one of knuckleheads seem to sit really well yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was a good running bike, and you put yeah. it away. Twenty, you pull it out twenty years later, it's still gonna run. Yeah, put some fresh gas and oil. Yeah, in they it. were they it's were more like right they out, were more in know? tune with tractors back then. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. But fuck yeah, you know, man. Because I remember, I remember Vic had a thirty-eight that he had for years. You know, and it would just sit in front of the shop, and it like for ten, it didn't run. No one started it for like 10, 15 years. Then one day he got a wild hair. We got some gas, put the oil in it, put a new point to condenser in it. And, you know, within five minutes he was running. They ran great. <laughs> you know, and it just sat, you know, and it's just, I don't know. I don't, I think a new bike, you can't really do that with them. No, it's right. true. You just can't because other shit goes wrong and she just goes bad because it's not made as well and it's, you know, way more complex and, you know, yeah. it's just different. Yeah, it's, 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 it's less of just like a, like a machine machine, you know what I mean? It's like. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, man, I, I mean, I do hope that, you know, and it's like weird too, because when you mention Barnes and Nobles, it's like, I don't, you know, do people still even buy and books? I don't even know if Barnes and Nobles, oh, sort of, even know if Barnes and Nobles <laughs> open right now. That's what I was going to say. It's like, the, the pandemic and all that. I don't yeah. even know if it's open. And then on top of that, everyone just has is. Kindles and whatever and just gets, or, yeah. or, or Audible uh, or whatever and just listens to books. I love books. Yeah. I love books. I know. I, know I love books. I know you're into history. But I did, and, I, I, I did just download Audible though on my phone. Yep. But, you know, that's just to give me something to listen to while I'm blasting when I'm not plugged listening to music. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, I love books. I love books about everything. I love them. Yeah. You know, and I, the neatest, there's so much neat shit out there that you just don't know. There's only one when time. When, all of it. Yeah. There's only one time when you don't love books. When you got to fucking move. You're in school. Yeah. When you, oh yeah. In school. Oh, yeah. Oh, in school. Yeah. And when you got to move and you got like fucking. Yeah. Kid, I don't even. I've. Boxes and boxes yeah. of them, you know. They're not. It's, yeah, it's not they're a, so it's, fucking heavy. Yeah, it's a heavy fucking They're load. Such right a pain there. in the ass to move. Oh, for sure. <laughs> that and records. What's well, like? I probably have tons of books upstairs here at the shop, and books and magazines and just all that shit. It's just tons of it. It's so much of it. It's just like yeah. ah, that's what I mean. I want to move once. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I'll let it all on fire afterwards. And the funny thing is, like, you know, think about all you got, or I think all, all I got. Then, then I, mm-hmm. I still think about this today. I'm like, you know. Mm-hmm. Think about how many Irish rich has. <laughs> you know, that dude was like an encyclopedia. Like I remember oh, sure. back then, you'd no, be like, you put a picture of a bike up. You'd be like, oh yeah, that came out. That was in like the 1971 Choppers uh, spring issue yeah. and it was page 30, 35 to 38. And oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, like it was Almost like a, a, a um, what do they call that when someone has a that memory, that certain kind of memory? Um Oh, like a photographic memory? Photographic memory for, for chopper yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, th- for sure. Uh, uh, that was great, you know? Um, yeah. But fucking... Uh, for sure. So, you know, um, the... Uh, you know, you worked at your uh, buddy's shop, and then you went to MMI, and then you went back and mm-hmm. worked at his shop. Yeah. What, yeah. what uh, you know, w- what led you over to uh, West Coast... Cho- Did you go to West Coast Shoppers right from there? From his shop? No, I went... I worked at another shop for a year and then got into my first really bad accident where I had, you know, I was at a cast for five and a half years and I had three failed surgeries to repair my right ankle. And then I had an open fusion in 98. Um, and during that time I worked, I didn't work for a while. And then I had my own shop for a couple of years during all that. Okay. And then I had, let's see, the last surgery was good and I got off painkillers. <laughs> uh, and then yeah. I shut my shop down and went back to work for Vic again for a third time. And then I was the head head of the service department in the shop. I mean, it was just me and two other guys, but you know, I was the main service guy in the shop there. Yep. For him. And um and then in oh oh one I went to work for Jesse. Okay. You know, somehow some put it in his head and we talked and I didn't go to work for him the first time. He offered me a job and then the second time well, okay. I turned him down. Huh. 
And then I did one to Chef Rinovic, and he's like, hey, we're going to ride to Surtis with Indy and Larry for Discovery Channel. You want to go? I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then at that point, I got to know him better, and then I built the shop better, and then I went to work for him two months later. Okay. Moved to Long Beach and went to work for him. You know, that was such a crazy time when you think about it. Like, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Discovery yep. Channel just got into, like, choppers. You know, and and, yep. and and at first they were in the cool shit, like before, yep. you know, the OCC stuff really started hitting. Right. Like they were like really, you know, like, you know, like with like Jesse or with like the bike build off stuff. Like first they were kind of, right. they, they weren't, they, they kind of just got into like some of the, like, you know, they didn't get into the coolest shit, but they were like, they were going right. in the right direction. You know what I mean? It was such a yeah, weird I time. Yeah, they kind of were. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it was. You know, because it all started with Jesse on TV, you yeah. know, when it was just kind of like, and it went boom. And I saw that because I went to work for, I was, I was working for him when the second motorcycle man two came out and it was fucking chaos. Dude. Oh, I can imagine. There'd be people at the gate down there just staring. It was fucking weird. Yeah. And what I, it was, it was neat, but it was a, it was a super neat time for what it was, you know, what was going on with it. Yeah. And then all the other spinoffs and TV stuff. And then it just kind of got hokey and weird again. And then it kind of just, you know, yeah. went to what Orange County Choppers, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then Monster Garage started, and that was all that was all good too for the business and all that shit. Because people see people doing stuff with their hands, and building shit, you know, and like kind of, you know, I mean, I totally agree with Jesse with that shit. That's like we need to promote that, you know, because not every kid wants to fucking have a fucking desk job. Yeah, absolutely. Not every kid is gonna go into that kind of work, and it's like there's so much neat shit you can do along those lines. And now more than you ever, know, that's, like, that's needed. You know what I mean? Because like, oh, abso- absolutely. You know, those, they're just going away. All these kids are going to college. You know? All these kids are going to college, yep. coming out with degrees, and they're working at like the Gap. Whereas if you just went to trade yep. school or learned how to be a plumber or an electrician, you're going to be getting in the union yeah. and making good fucking money, man. Like you know, exactly. and, you know, even if you're not building something or like creating like you know hot rods or choppers or something, like you can get into something where you're yeah, working with your still, hands and, and have a good career. Totally. Absolutely. You know, or just Make be a good welder, money and you know exactly. You know that's totally. I mean, that's you know that's that's absolutely true. Exactly. You know, there's so many things like that you can do that doesn't have to be what you know. Go to college, do this. You know, yeah, man. Okay, now what? You know, and there's so <laughs> many other things you can do, and like there's so many things that are totally essential, and being car mechanics and like plane mechanics, boat, I roll that shit. Yeah. You know, it's all essential shit because people's shit breaks, and there's got to be someone to fix it, and everyone's always going to have shit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. It's all gonna break, you Absolutely. know. It's just, it was, it was, it was cool that it was kind of from that perspective too, you know. Yeah. And I'm glad that, like, because I went, you know, it's like people even then were give a why are you gonna work for Jesse and blah blah blah. I'm like, well, because I mean, yeah, I mean, most of the stuff he built wasn't really what I, stuff I really liked a whole lot. Yeah. But I could appreciate it for what it was and for how he looked at it. Yeah. You know. Because he was looking at it as like a purest point of build, point of view. I'm sorry, to build something that really represented the original chopper style aesthetic, but do it differently in the same way, but different. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I can, and I can respect, I can respect that. Whether yeah. I really liked the end product or not, really was immaterial because I loved what I was doing there. And you know, the four years I was there was killer. You know, I mean, I kind of forgot all the bad stuff, and there's tons of bad stuff too. Sure, but, you yeah, know, whatever. But it's that's with anything, you know, yeah. but it's just like I look back and it's like I changed everything for me because I looked at everything completely different, you know, yep. and it's like it's just so just such a learning curve on every level for me. when I was there. It was killer. Yeah, man. You know, and it just kind of put me kind of where I am now, you know, and I owe a big part of that to him. Yeah, because yeah. I don't you know, I don't know what I don't know where I would have gone necessarily if I hadn't done that for those four years, you know. Well, you you still, sure. you still would have been you still would have been in the oh, sure. been in the been in oh, the mix, absolutely. you know. <laughs> yeah, somehow, yeah, but I don't I don't know what direction I would have gone, you know. Yeah, no, I. But you know, it doesn't really matter because that's what happened. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but dude, I just remember you know? that that Discovery Channel episode was awesome, uh, mm-hmm. uh, or that, mm-hmm. that that doc because like you you were going cross country on that panhead, you know what I mean? <laughs> that yeah. Was, that yeah. Was bad, badass. Yeah. Uh, that that was cool, man. That was those were good times, man. I and 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 Larry was such a good dude, man. I, I it's it's weird to think of like like where things would have gone with him had he you know he had not mm-hmm. done that accident and shit, man. Not to harp oh, on some sure. bad shit, but it's just you know, um, yeah, you know, it is what it is, you know. But but he was you know he was out of the time of his life, dude. Yeah, when he man. died, you know, yeah. all that whole time period for him, 
because he had always kind of wanted that, but you know, he just hadn't gone that direction. And it's like when we were in Strudis, he was like, the neatest thing about the ride to Strudis with him and, and Jesse and Giuseppe was like, I spent the whole week to Larry once we got there. Yeah. You know, we fucking rode all over the Black Hills, fucking all over everywhere up there. And we had such a blast. And it's like, no one knew who he was. But then there'd be this like young kid. It was like, you know, yeah, young kid. I was three at the time, but you know, like in his twenties, like, Oh shit, you're an E. Larry, you know, would freak out on him. And he's like, yeah, he's like the nicest guy ever to everybody. Yep. But it was before he hit his mainstream fame that he got from discovery channel, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it was really cool to get to spend that time with him, even though he was to say he never changed at all. No, no, he just no. had more fun with it. Cause all he did wanted to do was have fun. He had fun with it. You know, yeah, it yeah. just like, it was neat to get to spend that time with him before all that happened, you know? Yep. You know, and it was one of the neatest, neatest motorcycle things I've ever done was just hanging out with him for that whole week because his perspective on everything was different than I'd ever really heard, you know? Yeah. Completely out of his mind. He was a total carny nutbag. He was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about that guy. No. He was just an awesome guy. And it was an honor that I got to spend the time with him that I got, got to know him. You know? And I didn't know him well. Sure, We weren't yeah. best friends or anything, but, you know, we were, you know, spent some real time together that, you know, meant, meant a lot to me. Yeah, you know, absolutely, so. and I'm sure to him too. Neat. Like he 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 was he was a dude that like you know like you know like even if you weren't a close friend with him, if it's someone you met, if he met you and you know whatever, like he he would always remember you. Yep. You know what I mean? Like I, you know. Oh yeah, I mean I, it's funny you say that because I've had people since then that and Larry comes up, they'd be like, "Hey, I called the shop and asked him this," and then I talked to him like three years later, and he remembered who I was, and they were all amazed by that. And I'm like, "Well, that was just him. That's the way yeah. he was. You know, he was a neat guy." Yeah, man. It was a, it was a that was a sad week because both him and my buddy um, Eric Mosky, tattooer, yeah, died that same that same week that Larry did. That was a rough week. Yeah, it's so. a tough one. Yeah, oh. yeah, that sucked. But uh, yeah, Larry was a neat guy, you know. And it was just like I think that I don't know. I mean, the time I spent with him really kind of changed the evolution of shit too, you know. And it's always we pit, there's the, time, the, the time that we spend with people change the way we do what we do. You know? Sure, yeah. And he was a huge influ- influence on me at one point at that time. You know, it was really cool. Yeah, man. I dug it. Cool. So, what made you want to get into, um, you know, d- doing? Uh, I know you've been doing the casting stuff for a long time now. Like, what what mm-hmm. made you want mm-hmm. to kind of get into doing, you know, like uh, sand casting um, stuff? Well, I was buying and selling car club plaques. Yep. with Eric Mosky. We were, you know, we had collections of them. We're buying and selling them and, and copying them and making new ones. And, you know, and it just kind of, I fell into the right place at the right time with a guy I was dealing with with that. Like, hey, well, I'm like, wait a minute. And I started realizing that, yeah, there's all these sand cast parts that, like, you know, Randy Smith was making, the Finn Rocker covers, and yeah. all these little parts. And I started making, I just kind of started, I figured out, you know, once I figured out how it all worked, I kind of just went with it. You know, I made some pieces for my bike and then pieces for the Super Freak. And then, you know, and then it just kind of, I left West Coast and I just kind of took it from there. You know, so that's pretty much, that's it. You know, yeah. that's, you know, that, that's kind of how it started. Yeah. I've that's... just been doing it ever since and, you know, doing more and more complex stuff and different stuff and, you know, but it's really all stuff that I like. Like, you know, I do tons of custom work, like for shops with their logos on them, all kinds of shit like that. And, pressure plates like that, you know, derby covers or points covers or whatever, air cleaners, you know, it's just, you know, this past, like the past year, this past year, well, six months, I guess, has been kind of crazy just because I've had foundries that have been really good to deal with and they're still really good to deal with, but they've had a bunch of shit happen because it's COVID and all this other bullshit, you know? So it's been, it's been a rough year with that stuff. Sure. You know? It's been hard to get stuff out to people as fast as they want. And well, I never get stuff out to people as fast as I want. I'll yeah, that right well, now. and no, I'd like to. In this but culture, it's just me doing it by myself, it's yeah. so hard. And people, you know, it's like I'm not Amazon. Yeah, well, that's you know, what I was just going to say. And yeah, I'm, and I'm trying, and I don't yeah. have finished stuff in stock. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, because a lot of my stuff can be done a couple different ways. I don't, you know, it's like if I make, if I have a five points covers and I make them all for one thing, I'm just going to get people to want the other thing that's going to be made for. It. You know, yep. doing. I don't have enough stock for me to be, you know, making everything all the time, you know, so. And I think that's something people don't realize about a full custom place. Like, you know, that's same with us. Like, mm-hmm. we, you know, we make oil tanks and different things and, you know, like right. they're made to order. I can't just have like 30 of these fucking things right. sitting around, you, oh, you know, absolutely. and then it's like, and, and if I do make 30 of them, then eventually the the one the next guy orders is one that's not on the shelf, you know, and I got to make it anyway. Of course. And, 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 uh, of course. and, um, and, you know, so 
you know, people order something on a Monday and they used to Amazon next day or whatever, a two day delivery. And yep. it's like on Tuesday yeah, night, they're like, Hey, huh. where's my stuff? It's like, you ordered yeah. it yesterday, dude. Like, you know, I'm making it, yeah. you know, like, I don't want to say like relax or be rude, but it's just, Hey, this is like yeah. custom shit, man. This isn't like fucking right. box store shit, dude. Like, you well, know, I think it's, for the, it's for not Revzilla, part, you know? Are, no, for, sure. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, people are pretty cool with that. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. It's people out of the country that seem to think they're always getting cheated. Yeah, well, because I think they <laughs> get, I, have, I think they I get fucked a lot. Germany That's why, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I ship tons of stuff. To Germany is my big problem shipping. Yeah, I ship something to Germany, it doesn't show up. That's crazy. That's just probably, I don't even, I don't like shipping to Germany. I don't know if it's you know me or who knows what, but and that's you know, weird. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. But I've had the biggest problem I've had shipping out of the country is in Germany. Yeah, and, and Germany's one of the biggest, you know, you know people, one of the biggest countries that like buy this type of stuff too. Like I ship stuff to yeah. Germany, like every Germany and yeah. Australia, for some reason I'm shipping shit yeah, to like Australia pretty much every lately, day. Yeah. Australia lately has been a lot of stuff. Yeah. Germany. And I, but I ship like, like stuff to Italy, France. Yeah. And, you know, I'd love stuff to Canada too. So, oh yeah. You know, in Canada too. There. But Canada shit doesn't really get lost. Cause it's just, it's not, no. it's not leaving the continent. No. It's just going over a border, right. you know? But right. I find with this shit with the COVID though, like things are sitting in customs a lot longer and I feel bad. Like, yeah. You know? and, it, and it seems like I drop stuff off and it like doesn't go into the system for two or three days now sometimes. And yeah. I'm like, really? Yeah. Then, like, you like, then you look like, then you look like the dick. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. <laughs> right. I shipped it Wednesday. Well, I'll, just, I'll just, I'll just admit I'm the dick when it comes to shipping. Yeah. You know, because I'm, you know, my wife helps me with it here and there, but you know, I try to be on top of it, but I'm not always on top. You know, you'll always get your stuff, and if you don't get your stuff, I'll generally go out out of my way to make it right with you. Yeah, you know, because I don't want people to be unhappy with that shit. No, you know, no. It's like I had a an air cleaner recently that I shipped to a guy that I knew he wasn't going to be happy with because it was super porous underneath the polish and it didn't look that good. You know, and I'm like, Ugh, and I'm trying to fix it for the guy, and I'm like, listen, I mean, you know what? I'll refund your whole money. You keep that one, and as soon as I've got one, then you can pay me for it. You know, it's like I try to figure out ways to make people happy because I get it. You know, I you know, you spend your hard earned money on stuff and you want to get it and you want it to be what you want, but you know, it isn't always I wish it was always just that easy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. That, this it is, is what it is. This is this is the custom game, dude. Like shit shit yeah. happens. And right? it's like I need I need a fucking assistant is what I need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just to help me keep on top of shit because I just, you know, I can list the shit and it's just you know, I can only do one thing at a time. So be careful what you wish for. Now you're probably going to get a bunch of people yeah, hitting hit you no, up for the I position. Don't, no, I don't, yeah, well, <laughs> it's your, yeah, yeah. If someone's going to be assistant, it's going to be a fucking nightmare for a while because they're going to be cleaning for months. Yeah, yeah. And well, I don't, and I don't want, I don't want to hire someone to clean. I, you know, I don't, I, I need, I need whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, and, you know, but, here's the thing is the cleaning part could be considered their, their, um, learning the way around the shop. Uh, period yeah. you know what i mean and then yeah <laughs> but that's the thing too most people don't want to do that anymore no yeah. you know no one wants to pay their dues anymore it's like when i first went to work for vic and i was doing parts uh, every single day all the fucking bikes were in this little tiny showroom right and i would pull every bike yep. out the front fucking roll door, out roll door, out and roll in yeah onto the onto, onto the street onto the sidewalk and then i would mop sweep the whole shop mop the whole shop every single day and then every day i pull like suck in again i'm talking about like 50 dressers and shit through a little tiny door it was a fucking nightmare oh yeah you know but i that's that's just what i did that's what i had to do so it was no big deal you know but it's like people don't seem to you know people don't want to pay dues anymore they just want to get right to the the good stuff which i get but you know it doesn't work that way no and that's part of the whole amazon thing where they just want instant gratification and i'm like i i i still don't get that so <laughs> You know, it's, it's hard to bring someone in that, that thinks like that, that would want to, you know, that is going to have to do shit they don't want to do. Yeah. You know? But, but you know what? But, hey, you know, at the end of the day, I say, well, hey, fuck it, man. This is still motorcycle shit. Like, and this is... Exactly. There's some dudes that still carry on traditions, and it's not it's not coming from a place of disrespect to make you clean up or whatever. It's oh, like, if you sure. if you come in totally green... That's part of your way of learning around. Hey, what's this? Oh, yeah, oh, you know, sure. you know, and then you can tell them what part that is and where it goes and this and that. And, and it's right. it's uh, early education, man. It's it's like it's right. like Karate Kid shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, you're gonna be oh, waxing, sure. you'll be wax on, wax off for a little while, dude. You yep, know what I mean? <laughs> for sure. I mean, just like the tattoo world. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, dude, that's like There's even worse. There's another nightmare of that. You know I why? Know it is. You I know am. why that's a bigger so nightmare? Because are tattooers. Yeah, uh, I know. Nightmare. Yeah, it's, I get it. It's because the fucking TV shows are still rolling. At least with the bike shows, they're uh, all done. Know. You know what I mean? So it's like you, yeah. you know, it gets worse and worse in the tattoo world. That's for yeah. sure, man. And, oh uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know a ton of tattoos. Is like, and um, I get people send me where shit like the tattoo kits and tattoo school and tattoo. This, oh and I'm yeah, just like uh, yeah, tattoo yeah. school. <laughs> like, uh, like yeah okay you're okay yeah, whatever yeah, you what a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm not even i'll leave it alone and i don't tattoo i yeah. do i do laser removal but I, we're in a pretty old school right. shop where both of the tattoo artists that right. work here have been tattooing for for decades and you know put in their time right. and did did apprenticeships right. you know and did it did it the right way you know it's like and, right and I, I try and tell people that like tattoos yeah it's a trade but it's also a culture and you gotta you gotta kind of learn it man like to to, to really yeah, you appreciate can't just- it you can't just walk into it or buy your way into it. No, I mean, you know, not at all. But you can now. That's the problem. Like, but you go with, not yeah, at a, but, not at a legitimate yeah. shop, but there's yeah, plenty, not, a, not a lot of not not a legitimate level. You yeah, know, you can't exactly. You know, I, mean, I think you can, but you really can't. Yeah. I'm sure there's a motherfucker <laughs> no one, that's no come, one will ever look at you. The same. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's a motherfucker that's come out of tattoo college that went and opened the shop right away. You know what I mean? It's like fucking clown well, college and people you know? don't know any people don't know any better either so, no you know, yeah people just walk in off the street hey i want that okay i want to you know i want a heart on my yeah. leg that's a quarter of an inch across you yeah. know yeah that kind of shit yeah oh no, i i it's really more of like people coming with pictures on pinterest i want this exactly <laughs> i see it all day and it's like uh, oh i bet why why do you want that <laughs> that's already on somebody you know it's like yeah i totally. get it yeah but you know, oh, hey, whatever. You know, I guess funny. Pinterest is the new tattoo flash, I guess. You know what I mean? <sighs> for for a new I generation. Guess. For a new generation, you know? Uh, <sighs> no, that sucks. <laughs> that's the same as the whole, you know, not getting motorcycle shit from fucking magazines. Yep, I know. You know? I mean, I, I there's so much neat shit, you know? Mag- it was in magazines. And so many different types of shit. And yet there, you don't, there's no way to convey shit the same way now yeah. over the internet, you know? I don't get how people who are photographers and contributors can make a living anymore. Like when, with that, with the magazine industry being dead, I mean, I don't know, do, do motorcycle I, blogs or Instagrams pay people to take photos? I, I don't I know how that works. I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. Maybe, you know, yeah. that's like, I don't know how anyone makes any money taking pictures of naked girls anymore. Yeah. You know, there's no magazines. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a whole different deal, but you know, every girl has an only, only fans page now thanks to COVID, but yeah, they all need content, <laughs> but yeah, that's a whole other thing. It's just, you know, it, it, everything changes and it's, it, I think everything has gotten worse in, in the respect that it's become a marginally marginalized and a fraction of what it was. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like it's like the tattoo thing with everything online and TVs and motorcycles with everything online and no magazines and like none of that shit. It, it just, it changes it. Yeah. You know? And I, and I, and I think it's a, I think it's sad because I think it's good making everything worse. Yep. And I think it's making everything less pure. Yeah. You know, especially tattooing, you know, and, and, and music is a whole nother nightmare because there is no music the way it used to be. Sure. You know, I mean, all that shit, it's just, I think the purity of all this stuff has become marginalized by, by how it's presented now to the masses. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's definitely like, you know, like tattoo culture, especially um, Mm -hmm. with everything that's going on right now. It's like, you see it, it's not like, and, and even like the old shops, have had to change a little bit to adapt to it, which sucks, you know, like mm-hmm. even our shop, like yeah. our shop used to be the fucking pirate's den shop. Like, you know, like you came in, right. now this shit was going on, like fucking, fucking right. bad people were in here, you know what I mean? Getting uh-huh. tattooed. And now it's like soccer moms come in. And so you got to be a little bit, uh-huh. you can't be a, what the fuck you want. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you got to right. be a little bit more, with the, you know, or, you know, you know, you know. Well, that you, was the you, thing about bike shops too. Yeah. You know, because bike shops used to be fucking scary. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know, I mean, I remember the first time I went into Vic when I was 18. Yeah. We, I was cruising around on a BSA that I had with my buddy on the back, and we went in there, and it was fucking scary. I remember that. I was like, oh, shit, what the fuck we walked into, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like and it's like there isn't any of that anymore. I mean, there is here yeah. and there. 
like the last place like that was that place Cyclopedia in Des Moines that Jeff Wright took me to. Yeah. Which is like a fucking time warp, dude, back to the 90s. It's fucking rad. Fucking big ass fucking mess. The dude was in there, was out of his mind. He was awesome. And he had this full on, like, nest out FXR. And it was just like so rad because it was a total throwback to those little shots. It yep. was like 100 pounds of shit, a three pound area. And it's just dark and shitty. And people are fucking scary looking. And they look at you, you dirty looks. And they don't yeah. even talk to you. And, Yep. Oh, that shit was, that was like the neatest part of the whole bike thing, you know, if you, and it's just gone. And there were so many shops like that around that were like that, you know, if, this if, was like that. Michael, Michael McCloskey's like that before he moved across the street. Yep. Rodan's in Tahongo was like that. I mean, they were all like that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden now everything is a showroom. Yeah. Everything's perfect. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, if, which if, is fine, but if, you know, it's just, it loses that, I don't know, credibility maybe, or I don't know. It's energy just, or just darkness yeah. or mysteriousness or but you know what i think know? we come from a time and a place like you know gr- growing up with like you know and this is whatever like uh, you know i'm not being the guy that's talking about whoa you know when we were kids blah 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 but we came from yeah. punk rock scenes at a time where like punk rock was still a dangerous thing and then we got into oh, other worlds sure. where things were still dangerous. I think that's why we got into bikes and tattoos and all that shit. Cause they were all well, these yeah. like dangerous and we, subcultures and, and we were used to too. that, you know? Right. Punk rock and bikes, and skateboarding and punk rock, all that shit. And it's all changed now by how it's perceived. It's all quote unquote mainstream now. Yeah. You know, it's and all it's the cool shit now, it's you know, all changed. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It, for sure. I would you know, rather. It was all the punk rock shit. And it's, it's the same thing. It's like the whole, like the fuck board. And also thought it was choppers and punk rock because yep. it's the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just, it's just in a different form. Yep. You know, it's absolutely the same attitude. It's the same fuck you attitude. It's the same anti establishment attitude, you know, which is still there. Yeah. But it's just, it's been, you know, bought and sold to the masses at this point. Yeah. But. I think there's still some of the only areas where there's still some real motherfuckers left. And that's, if oh, anything is the takeaway from this, seek those guys out and listen to what they got to yeah. say. You know what I mean? Because they, they're the ones sure. that are, are interested in keeping it alive, you know? like For sure. For sure. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. It's like these people are, like, dropping dead here and there. People with so much knowledge, and it's just going to disappear. Yep. You know? Like when Mike Barty died, who was one of the, you know, he was, I believe he was a um, galloping goose back in the day and all these restorations on bikes, early riders guys. And he knew all the club guys back in the sixties. And, and like when he passed a couple years ago, it was like all this knowledge just kind of went poof, yep. you know? And like Smokey, who was a guy in Long Beach that did a bunch of like race motors and Indians and, you know, old race bike stuff. It's like he died and it's just like poof, yeah. you know, he gave all his Indian stuff to go. I mean, from Brat style, you know, because he's building Indians, you know. And there's not a lot of guys doing that, you know. And he passed some of that on to him, but like the core knowledge just goes away. Yeah. You know, and it's like we got to keep it somehow. Sure. You know? Yeah. And I don't know everything. Fuck. I'll be the first to tell you I don't know everything. And it's like someone, I get people call asking questions all the time, which is cool. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. Yeah. I'm not that guy that's going to tell you I know something if I don't know it. But luckily, I know enough people that 99% of the time I can figure it out. Yeah. You know, and it's like those knowledge bases go away. So people need to just learn what they can. It's like it all started with me with reading books, magazines and all that shit. You know, it's like that's what really got me into it. Because there's so many out of every single Harley book I can find. I mean, I read everything, all the magazines. And, you know, it's just that's how it started for me, you know, but it's different now for people. You know, they get into it and they want to have this and they want to have that, but they don't really understand where it comes from or why it's like that or, you know, any of that stuff, which is kind of a drag, if you ask me. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Not that not that, that makes their interest any less important to them, you know, which is yeah. still just as valid, you know. But I think there's so much more that people are missing because it just isn't – it's just harder and harder to find now. Yeah. Yep. Does that make sense? Kind of? Okay. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, man. Absolutely, yeah. I, 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 I don't agree. make any sense. <laughs> But dude, uh, oh sorry, I got a some yeah, jerk no, off calling me. I'm not going to take that <laughs> call. Obviously, I thought I shut all. I thought I shut my phone off, but I guess I didn't. Um, uh, so all good. It, it, I know we 
you've talked about coming out this way before. If you do make your way out here, remind me that I got to take mm-hmm. you to a place called Cape Cod Choppers. There's a dude named okay. Lumpy who's been building bikes since the 60s. <laughs> yes. He still works at the counter. He's got, he's and missing, his name's Lumpy. That's perfect. He's I'm missing half a leg now. And, you know, he comes <laughs> yeah. out, he rolls out, and he looks at you and goes, what the fuck do you want, asshole? It's <sighs> like the first thing he says to everybody. Like, he doesn't, <sighs> like, whether he knows you or not. And it's like fucking right. a breath of fresh air. And all you got to do is stick sure. with it for a little while and give him a little shit back. And and then he'll start laughing, and then right. he'll talk to you. You know what I mean? But if you, it's yeah, like exactly. a it's a litmus test. If you go in there and you get all scared yeah, and totally shook or offended, you, then he's like, he don't want to deal with you. You know, and he doesn't have to because he's totally. been doing it forever. I you know, it. and, and it's it's the best. Right. They he has a new shop. Um, but, but there's a long story about like his old building, but his old shop was so it was such like the quintessential like bike shop, like like throwback, like right. been around forever type of thing. And the, the new shop's really right. nice too, but it's it's newer, so it's it's way like physically nicer than the other shop. And, and uh, right, but, I got gotcha. you. But you, you know what I mean. But it's still the same attitude. What the fuck do you want, asshole? Like that's, no, that's, that's <laughs> man. Like I can hear him saying that, and it yeah. sounds like every shop I've walked into like that when I was younger. Yeah, you know? yeah. Tattoo when shop and bike kid. shop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. Because no one took me seriously at all with the bike thing until way later. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't even talk to me because I'm just the kid behind the counter, or I'm just the kid working on the bike. You know, because I was a young kid. And none of those people would take me seriously, ever. You know, it took a long time for anyone to actually look at me and listen to what I was saying when it came to that shit. Yeah. You know, because it's just like people, they just assume you're young, you don't know anything. You yeah. know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, it took a long time for me to get any respect. Like, when I first started really getting respect from those guys, I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but then you but but you knew yeah, but you deal. appreciated it because you knew it was earned. You put in your time, you know, and, and, oh, and sure. you earned that yeah. shit, you know. And it's like for sure, and 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 that's the way to do it, you know. Like you know, and not and not that I've done all the right things or made all the right yeah. decisions because I haven't. You know, I mean, yeah. I've fucked up everything royally in every different way at some point, you know. But that's how you learn, you know. I'm <laughs> you know, and I'm still and I'm still learning, and it's still yeah. a learning process for me. Every bit of it, you know, it's like. My buddy Oxy and I were talking about that. Like, you know, it's like all these people that think they know everything. I don't want to take my shit to them. I don't want no. them touching my shit because they don't. Because no yeah. one does. No. You know, as long as it's always a learning process, that's what makes it, you know, pure too. You know, because it's like, I don't know everything. And I, you know, there's always, always stuff that I do I could do better or get better at. Yeah, you know, of course. And I want to get better at, you know, but it's like people seem to just get cocky and think that, you know, their shit doesn't stink. And I know my shit stinks. Yeah, and, and it's weird Believe because my, my, my wife tells me every day. <laughs> it's it's weird too because as soon as you think that you know, like you get that kind of an attitude, I feel like you cut yourself off from learning because you're like, because you're not open. To, you're not open to hearing new shit. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it's oh no, this is how sure. I do it. Well, there's five yep. other ways to do it, and one of them might be better. And if you just listened, maybe you'd pick it up. You know, and and oh, and, for sure, for sure. And, and that's the other thing too. It's like with the bike thing. There's a million ways to do everything. Yeah. You know, there's ways to do it. There could be a certain thing, and there could be two or three ways to do it that all are totally viable. Yeah. You know, just because you do it this way doesn't mean that you're right and someone else is wrong. It's just there's different ways of doing shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And some are just a little better than others. Yeah. <laughs> no, ab- no, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, there's always a right way and a wrong way, but there's various, sometimes various ways to get to that right point. Does that yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Some, just some look like, cleaner, you know, I guess. Yeah. Some are a little cleaner, yeah. I guess. That's all, you know, it depends on what you yeah, do. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it depends what you're doing, but there's always going to be, you know, the right way to do something, but there might be different ways to get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I know. I'm just playing around, but you know, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, it's, I don't, I don't know. Like there's still like shit comes in our shop all the time where it's like, been doing this mm-hmm. so long i've never seen that before i've never seen anything like that mm-hmm. like and it's like yeah. i'll be upset the week like that's pretty much almost weekly you're like what the fuck you yeah. know i've never seen that you know and it's like uh, right i'll be upset like you know when that if that ever stops or slows down i don't think it will because as the, no, old, the, the more hands that get into a motorcycle and do fucky things to it like uh, the, you know there's the more of a chance of, the, yeah and, and, and the more of a mystery it gets when you get it and it's like what you know or like you know to me it's like the new shit is all these like failing electrical components man like we just yep. like you know tsms and tssms and ecms and this and that like shit you don't got to worry about on the older bikes you know what i mean but oh for like, sure and then it's like are you just you know like i don't 
a lot of that shit, I don't know. Like, uh, my tech junior handles all that shit. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I'm like, all right, I'll go bend that sissy bar and make that oil tank. You you deal with that. You know what I mean? But he went yeah, to school sure. and, and, and he knows that and he loves that shit. You know what I mean? Right. Like, at, right. by by heart, I'm more of a fabricator than, than a tech. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not as right. into that stuff, you know, admittedly. Right. And, 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 uh, um, right. But, uh, but yeah, man. But there's but, still all kinds of weird shit like that out there. Cause oh, like Aki, absolutely. I'll, I'll get a call from Aki because Aki Hog Killer's shop is right behind mine. And he and I work together at West Coast. So <laughs> we've known together for a long, known each other for a long time. You know, yeah. but he'll be like, um, come over here. Okay. And we'll be like, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. People do, people do weird shit and it never fails because yeah. they do. <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah. it's great. You can tell when when meth was involved or some kind of uh, narcotic was involved <laughs> in the building of a bike. Like, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> but you know, that's always the amazing thing to me out there is like, you know, I talk to Nick or people, and it's like, yeah, the guy down the street's got this shop. We talk to him, and it's like, there's so many shops, and there's so much more of an industry down there than on the east. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, I, I miss having like that kind of a com- camaraderie because there's not as many of us out here. But it's cool. Like, I, right. I, you know, you know. I'm, I'm not slamming it, but like, it's kind of cool that you guys like you have like a bunch of people around you that are doing similar things, mm-hmm. you know, with their own spin yeah, on it. Sure. That you can always, you know, for like sure. roll over and check things out and see see cool shit or, or weird shit or funny shit, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's so much. Yeah, there's, there's so much of it. There's so much of it going on. You know, it's such a big thing now. You know? Oh yeah, it's the biggest now it's ever been. Yeah, you know, I it, don't know how it. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I was just going to say that. It's like, it seems like there's like a resurgence and there's a lot of, I think it's cool that there's a lot of like younger dudes or younger guys and gals getting into it. And uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot more resurgence of like long bikes and crazy shit like that. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, yep. you, you know, you and I have seen like the changing of the guard a few times and seen things come and go. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know, we've seen like, like, you know, the quote unquote, the bobbers and then the wide tire bikes yeah. and then the, you know, gooseneck oh, yeah, frames sure. and then this and that. And, and, uh, yeah, it all seems to, it seems to run in cycles for a lot yeah. of this stuff. Yeah. It all comes back and then it goes away. Then it comes back and it goes away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but then like you think that too, it's like, I was thinking like that. One of the things, like if you pick up like a mega issue of the horse from like 15 years ago and there's all these advertisers, you know, maybe one or two of them still doing it. Yeah. You know, yep. cause so many people got into it then. Sure. Hoping to make a ton of money from it before they realize that it's really hard to make money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You yeah. know, and it kind of, people came in and left. Came in, spent too much money, lost a bunch of money, and left. You know. Yeah. Yep. But it's like the people that that have that innate love for it, that really love it, to do it because they love it, not because they're trying to be making million fucking dollars. Those are the people that are always going to be around. Oh, absolutely, you know? absolutely. And those are the people that those are the people that really keep it going. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And that always will. Yeah. You know, so, and that's so, the shit that I love because I love that shit. Yeah. Me too, man. I, I, you know, all these worlds do to like, it's my whole life, man. You know? And it's like, and I yeah. know it's yours too, you know? And that's why I was like, yeah. you know, stoked to always, you know, bring you on and, and talk to you anytime, you know, anytime. And, um, yeah. And no, I'm stoked. We finally made it happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Cause my schedule is a little crazy and it's just, you know, dude, mine is too. Happens hard. Yeah. And then we, we've coming out of COVID and trying to, ramp back up uh, even, even though you man. know i know you never shut down i never shut down we're we're essential yeah. we're essential i i yeah i, I want to get my little maybe you should do that man you cast up some uh i'm essential buttons dude well, <laughs> yeah totally well i don't even know if i'm essential but i work by myself so yeah i'm not gonna see anybody yeah so yeah you can all fuck off yeah exactly you know i mean i mean yeah because i mean i'm probably less essential than you are because i'm not really doing any service work well hardly any but you know it's well, like well, you in know, the state I'm of Mass- be here because I have to fucking work. Yeah, exactly. End of story. Yeah, and 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 you know? and and you carve your own way. No one's no one's gonna you know. You, there's no one uh, cutting you checks if you don't sh- if for not showing up. Yeah, um, exactly. In Massachusetts, just anything that was vehicle repair, auto repair was yeah. was fell under essential. So, uh, we yeah, we I mean, I think slithered, I'm pretty sure slithered it was through the- that. <laughs> not through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm pretty sure it was, it was the same thing here. But yeah. I just. I just kept working. My wife hasn't worked. My wife still hasn't worked, you know, because she's a massage therapist. So she works for a week and then they had some weird shutdown again and she yeah. hasn't worked since, you know? So it's just like, what do you do? You know, it's just, <laughs> I don't know, dude, this whole COVID thing. It's just like, it's all these fucking people that are so mad about having to wear a mask. And like, I know people that have COVID. I know people that have had people in their families die from COVID. I know it's a real thing. Yeah, absolutely. But, 
there's so much other shit that's gone along with it now and it's all been politicized that there's no way of knowing what the truth is on any matter, on any level from anybody. Yep. You know, and it sucks, you know? Yeah. And, and <laughs> you no, know, like, no one's telling it. The problem is that there's no like new source um, mm -hmm. that's just telling it straight. You know what I mean? Everyone's got their own yeah, spin well, on it. Yeah. There's no, yeah. There's no unbiased news source that will tell you what's really going on. Yeah. And, and I don't really think anybody knows what's really going on. No, no. Except for, you know, I don't even know if there's a handful of people somewhere that we don't know about that actually know what's really going no, on. No, no. <laughs> I, I just, everybody's really lost at this point. The only thing I know that's going on is that there's absolute fuckery afoot, like, and people are taking advantage of the oh, situation. Absolutely. So you know, yeah. and 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 the numbers are just a numbers game, man. Because like, I know mm -hmm. people that are like, I worked in the health, you know, like I said with the anthropology, I worked in the health stuff for a long time, and I know people that wow. are like hospital managers and stuff, and you know, they were getting paid by the number of COVID patients they admitted. So guess, you know, and there was no tests, big tests really at right. the time. So guess what? Anyone right. coming in with a sniffle, like was a fucking COVID patient because yeah. everyone was and, out of work. Anybody that so, died, yeah. anybody that died, no matter what it was, died of COVID. Yeah, exactly. So numbers yeah. were being played with. Am I saying that it's not a real disease or that it's a horrible disease for those people that are aff afflicted with it? No, I'm not saying that. I, it a hundred percent is, but I'm also right. saying that it's it's it, unfortunately it's it's a disease that's being very politicized and played upon political. So it's just as much of a political issue as it is a, as a, a, a medical issue. And uh, right. and and you know, you know, it's just fucking horrible because all it's doing is dividing people uh, as as well. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you got oh, the, the mask versus the non-mask or this and that, and mm -hmm. and and nothing is being handled in any logical or rational way by any state government. I mean, I can't say that. I, I don't know no. every state government or, but I can no. tell you the federal I mean, government no. is, is, is being uh, foolish with it. And I know the Massachusetts mm -hmm. is being foolish with it. And a lot of other states are being foolish with it. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. California is a nightmare, dude. Oh, I know, dude. You know, and I don't, and I don't know. And, and the whole shutdown, it's like, I don't know how these people are going to keep their homes. Yeah. You know, cause there's millions of people that, you know, don't make, crazy money where they have tons of money saved yeah. where you know that they're behind in their rent for four months and it's like that's not an easy thing to come up with no no for a lot of people you no. know and then so they're just fucked now yeah and i don't and that doesn't make any sense to me you know i don't i just don't i don't get the government thinking why they're going to shut everything down and then not expect you know i mean they should have frozen the debt you know, on sure. some level for, yeah. you know, I mean, for that, so people don't lose their fucking homes and shit. Well, the problem too was that you know, you know like we kind of talked a little bit, I think, about earlier, is that you know, and mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't just shut everything down; they selectively shut the shit down. So it's like, what you don't think right. you can go get COVID at Walmart? Fuck you! You know what I mean? Like, uh, but you're, totally. you're going to shut down a, a mom and pop place that maybe seven people go in and out of all day? You know what I mean? Like, right? You know, it, it was just like, uh, you know, yeah, it's very selective and very dumb yeah i mean it makes no sense it doesn't make any sense it's just you it's, know it's very inept or 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 there's a there's a like a greater like weird plan at, afoot i don't know what it is i hope it's just dumbness yeah. and ineptness you know who but who I knows so. you know but um yeah you know, i know that and uh, i'm just like people get so people are so just losing their minds over the mask thing out here yeah you know and i live in huntington beach which is like the center of the mass rebellion you know there's yeah. like a restaurant in huntington that like if you have a mask on, they won't let you come in. See, to me, that's dumb. And I'm like, that's, and then like, I'm dumb. like, come on, you people. I'm like, you know what? It's like I wear a mask when I go places like that because they want you to, and you're just looking out for other people's health. That's it. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't see that as some fucking Nazi state telling me taking my rights away, telling me what I have to do. You know? Yeah. People see it that way. Whatever. That's yeah. what they're gonna think. But you know what? I just, I'm just looking out for everybody's health because I know it's a real thing. You know, and it's killing people. You know, but I don't know how bad it really is. Yeah, no, I, no one does. Told, no one I'm does. I'm an I'm an I'm an absolutely an at risk person because I have pretty bad asthma. You know, and my lung capacity is shit. You know, so if I get it, it could kill me. But I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, you don't know all the reality of it. So nope. you know what? In my eyes, I just do my shit. I love social distancing because I don't want to be around people anyway. <laughs> yeah, I love it too. <laughs> so I have no I have no problem with that at all. That's my I, favorite part. 
I'm going to campaign know. as a, I'm going to run for something just on the thing that I'm going to keep social distancing in place, even when the masks are gone. <laughs> like, like vote for yeah. me. I guarantee I will keep, keep, keep pushing it through social distancing yep. all the way, oh, dude. I awesome. love it. Um, for sure. But, but yeah, but I, mean, I don't know. People are just getting, and it's just going to get crazier as more people start to lose their houses or their homes. And well, that's what I mean. Because well, people well, are just going to start getting evicted because they owe four months of back rent. I'm like, well, how do people deal with that? Yeah. You know, or businesses, how, how are well, businesses going to do Like, yeah, you, you're someone who put all your, your time and your money and, 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 and mm-hmm. everything into your business. And then it's been closed mm-hmm. for like four months and then they let you open up for three weeks oh, and then God. they shut you down for two yeah. months again. Like, right. like, you don't know, like, I don't know. And, and there's also just a fundamental problem with the definition of small business, like your small business, sure. but, but also a 500 employee company that generates millions of dollars of revenue is still a small business. Like, yeah. Like on, on paper, they're still the same, but in reality, they're very different. Yeah. I think there needs to yeah, be like sure. the one to 15 employee small business. You know what I mean? And oh, th- for sure. there needs to be a couple of little grades of, of, of things in there. Like, because that's why there was all those problems oh, when, when they were doing like the, the programs, like, you know, you were finding out like people that were hedge fund managers who uh, were working who for never, the, who never stopped making money. Yeah. We're, we're collecting Ever. millions in fucking uh uh right. of those ppp loans because quote right. unquote they were they were a contractor you know what i mean like you know what i mean yep. so so they were just they were just milking the system and it's like right. meanwhile I mean, like and that's, and that's a huge problem because there's yeah. so many people that fucking work the system so everyone else yeah. gets fucked yeah you know absolutely know. People are fucked. i still can't stand everybody everybody sucks like, you know, not for nothing, you know, like, you know, chopper head, like I got eligible for one of those loans. I didn't take it. And my uh-huh. tattoo shop yeah. got, got eligible for one of those loans. I didn't take it. Like, you know, yeah. I was like, you, you know, I still kind of something to be said about, you know, making your own way through things. And it's like, I get, for I sure. get, and on top of that, I just get scared that I don't feel like any of those things come with no strings attached. We just don't know what the strings are yet. You know what I mean? Even my accountant exactly. said that. He's like, people what the strings are yet. he's like, they've, they're changing shit daily with that stuff. So just you know what I mean, and I was like, yeah, I don't, I'm, yep. I'm all right with that, you know. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll no, make, I got gotcha. you for I'll, sure. But um, but yeah, but you know, it did sound interesting. I, I wasn't gonna say I wasn't tempted to just say, yeah, fuck it, give me that money. <laughs> well, of course. Well, yeah. Who, who isn't gonna say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you got to look at your situation and figure out what's the right thing to do. Yeah. You know? No. Now. You can't just- yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, if if it was literally like I needed to take that, or I was going to be shut down that day, and, you know, of course I would have, I would have, you know, been more apt to take that. But like I was like, I can mm-hmm. make it through without it. Like fuck it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, don't want to be, I want to be beholden to the government the least amount that I can be beholden to the yeah, fucking government. No, no kidding. And uh, yeah, that's that. <laughs> we all we're all in the wrong business. We all should have been starting to sell ammo before this happened. There's I know an ammo shop like down the street from my house. That the fucking line is around the building every single day. I am I am very from, shocked from that, the beginning of COVID. It's I still know. around the block every single day. That's crazy. I'm just very surprised that there's someone allowed to sell ammo in California, man. Like you, got <laughs> <a> fucking. <laughs> Yeah, well, you gotta you gotta be registered to buy ammo in California. You can't just buy ammo anymore. You have to be, you know, have to take like the same test you get buying a firearm. That's crazy. I I haven't bought any ammo in California since they since they did that. That's insane. You know, I mean, I have ammo for the stuff I need ammo for, and you know, yeah. I don't. I'm hoping I don't need a whole lot more. If I need a whole lot more, then I'm in deep shit. So yeah, well, what's the point? You know, and I I don't need to be on. You know, and I don't want to get involved in that whole thing. So no, you know. yeah. It's crazy. But there's yeah. a whole lot of Democrats buying guns now. I know. I was like, <laughs> out here, they were anti-gun before. I heard about that. I heard that. Like, I, I forgot who was talking about that. Someone was. They were like, yeah, yeah they're lot- all pissed off. They're all pissed off. They have to wait. Yeah, it's like motherfucker, <laughs> you voted for that shit, man. Like, you got that right. <laughs> yep. And uh, and and you know, for and, sure. I, and just b- before anyone starts to put me or you in a camp. I am independent, motherfuckers. I, I am not a Republican or a Democrat, so I can put po- I poke fun yeah, at both no. of them, and that's I think, and that's still one of my biggest things. And <laughs> if I preach it every episode, I don't give a fuck. If you came from the mm-hmm. punk rock fucking scene and you're a Democrat or Republican, you didn't get fucking lesson one in punk rock one hundred and one, like fucking <laughs> question authority and exactly. fucking you know like yeah for sure. So fuck you, fucking <laughs> rethink your life. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, totally. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, there's there's parts of everything that are good, parts of everything that are bad. Absolutely. Parts of both sides that are good, parts of both sides that are bad. There's no, there isn't anywhere in the middle. You cannot allow to be in the middle, but there's a lot of us in the middle. 
You there's know? more people in the middle than anywhere else. And and and, right. and the only the, the loudest voices, the ones that bark the loudest are the ones that are on the far left and far right. And that's that's what you no, hear more sure. because it's more interesting right. to hear. It's more quote unquote yeah. juicy or makes funnier memes yeah, or whatever. And the people, you know what and I mean? the people and the people in the middle aren't out there aren't out there screaming about it either. No, no, no. You know, yeah. they're trying to live their lives and, you know, do the best they can with what they got. Absolutely, or 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 they're, or they're just working too hard to, and they don't have the time yeah. to talk about shit. You know what I mean? Like like they're just yeah. trying to keep food on the table. Yeah, they don't. And, have, they don't have, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that's my whole deal with it. Since this whole COVID started, it's like you know what? I got to work for my family. That's what I do. End of story. Yeah, absolutely. I'm working because I gotta. You know, I gotta take care of my family and I gotta you know move forward. I gotta want to lose what I've got. I gotta move forward. So I just then I work. That's it. Yeah, man. I get you it. Know? I get it. You know, my mental health has suffered, but that's a whole other story, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get you that, know, too. It's all the bullshit, just all the constant bullshit that's out there now. You don't know what to believe, who to believe, why yeah. to believe it, why they believe it, and they don't even believe it. You and, know, and, and, it's just, you know. and you know what, man? Yeah. That's going to weigh down on anybody who's a kind of a rational person who and who kind of gives a shit. You know what I mean? Like, For sure. Because it's like, it bums you out, man. Like, what the fuck is going on? And then when you see... Yeah. People like, you know, like your neighbors or, or people, you know, or people online or whatever that are getting caught up in all these fights and just the divisive shit. And it's like, what the fuck is going on, man? Like it would weigh down on anybody, dude. You know what I mean? When you oh, sit back sure. and, and you think about it, you know, like, of course, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for sure. But I think I think we need two things that would uh, that would like really I think help straighten things out quick. If everyone unenrolled from the parties and registered independent, that would send such a message and get all these fucking politicians scattering to like really stop representing yep. you again. And two, we need we need fucking term limits on fucking Congress and the Senate because I that, agree. Sh that shit For is sure. is fucking shit up because you got these career politicians that are just fucking yep. shit. You up. Don't you don't do anything. No, nope. don't do anything that, that you look at the numbers. They go to what, like 10 percent of their actual votes, yep. you know, and they don't even do anything. And all they yeah, do is they're just there to tow party lines. They're not there to represent you. <laughs> yeah. They're just there to, to vote for their party. And that's well, it. I think that's the biggest problem with government is is a government that was designed to represent the people. And it doesn't. It doesn't. Yep. There's, On there's any a level big disconnect. It, yeah. it represents it represents big business. It represents big, you know, all the corporate interests that, that pay for everything. It doesn't represent the people. Nope. That are paying their taxes every year that, you yeah. know, expect the fucking government to help them out when they need it. And, you know, expect the cops to show up when they call the cops and, you know, expect the fire department to show up when their house is on fire. You know, that's, you know, what people expect. They don't, I don't think people ask for that much. No. You know? But we're at a point now where like that much is, seems to be too much for people. And, you know, it's just, I think everything has just gone a little haywire. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what it's going to take to bring it back to normal. I don't know. I, I think I almost, I, I, get, I get scared where I feel like it's almost get got to get to like a point where it breaks for it to get back because people are just, well, we're it's just, already broken. Yeah. Well, I mean, breaks <laughs> to a point where like, yeah, I, you, yeah, I know you, what you, mean. you know what I mean? Because like people are just fucking eating the spoonfuls of shit that the fucking government's feeding you, you know, like, and it's yeah. like, how crazy. Well, I mean, everybody's how, feeding you a government. Of, everyone's feeding you a spoonful of bullshit. Oh, yeah. All the politicians, all the people that believe this, all the people that believe that. It's, yeah. You know, I don't think anybody is, there's just no rational thinking anymore and no one has common sense anymore. I know. And, and then that's you the know? part that scares me. And that's when I'm like, did that just happen uh, by yeah. mistake or circumstance or is that by design? And then if that's by design, right. that's like kind of weird and insidious. And that's the shit that gets me scared. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But for sure. Yeah, but we'll never know. You know what yeah. I mean? We'll never know. No, we never will. And that's what you know what? And that's you got to accept that, too, though. And I yeah. have. And I'm not going to know. No one's ever going to tell me or inform me of what's really going on. You know, so all I can do is do the best of what I've got. You know, yeah. I got to do the best. I got to try to run my business the best I can, try to take care of my family the best I can, you know, try to get to spend the time with my friends that I love and care about as much as I can. And that's it. Because when it comes down to it, in my eyes, that's what matters. That's the only, that's, that's the only shit that matters. And my yeah. family matters to me. My close friends matter to me, you know, and yeah, it's really it. You yeah. know, nothing else is really as important to that anymore. You and know, your, and your magazine collection. Yeah, I love that too. <laughs> no, it's really the books. The books, the books matter more than me, the magazine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> but I like my magazine. You you were kind of, I don't know if, not hitting around, but I, are you foreseeing like a move out of California in the future? Or is it something you're thinking about? Eventually. Oh, yeah, for sure, eventually. Yeah. Is there some place you're thinking of? I'm going to go anywhere. I, I don't know. I mean, we thought about a couple different spots. I don't know. 
Yeah. My wife would love to move to Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's not going to well, be that much. Of, of her mind. It's it's going to be I California. Think she's out of her mind. Yeah, it's going to be California <laughs> with a fucking weird accent. Yeah. That's <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I don't know. I just yeah. honestly, I just want to move somewhere where I have some space, and I can have a shop on the same space as my home, and yeah. I can shoot a gun out every every window and not hit anybody. Yeah. If you and if, not have to worry about all the bullshit. Yeah. This, I just want to be away. I want to move to a slower pace. I want. I'd like to be somewhere where it's at my pace instead of the world's pace. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I just, I just want, I look at it differently now as I'm older. Yeah. Now. And I like, like, I just want to be somewhere like that with my family and, you know, do what I love and have some space that's mine. And that's it. You know, it's pretty simple and it's not super crazy. Yeah. You know, I get it. It's just, I just want, I just want peace at this point. And it's just pretty sad that like, you can't get that in your home States anymore. Like, you know, like, like a lot of, I mean, I can, I do. But it's not, it's just different. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I would have to move far away from any of the, in California to do it. And California is just a nightmare at this yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Everything is so expensive and it's just all oh, backwards. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's just all the people in charge have lost their minds. Yeah. It's like, you, know, you motherfuckers. Look at all the wrong things as being important. Dude. You can't. You can't even buy a carburetor uh, from Drag Specialties anymore. <laughs> like fucking. I know. That's true. Like, we can't buy. We can't. We. I can't buy pipes. Can't buy anything. Like I know. That. I. I. I, uh, I have uh, uh, friends in California that that talk to me about that all the time. I'm like, I'm gonna load up my Sprinter van with a bunch of fucking pipes, a bunch of fucking <laughs> tuners, a bunch of fucking carburetors, yep. and I'm just gonna drive yep. around California shop to shop like the fucking shitty mass hole fucking ice cream man and be like, what you need? I got yep. it. <laughs> totally. That's, that's how I'm gonna no, make my totally fortune, true. man. And I'm gonna make my fortune totally you know, true. in the industry that's totally true <laughs> um yeah that and uh reconditioning 2005 wide tire bikes that i can buy for three thousand dollars now <laughs> <laughs> wait well, for you that just buy them and take you just buy them and take them apart oh, sell I know. the I, motors I, and transmissions I, and yeah. drivetrain yeah i'm just playing i'm playing you know and and throw the back wheels away yeah yeah pretty much yeah you know <laughs> where you just build or you build like billet hose mounts for someone for the front of their house where they don't have their water hose or oh around yeah something. yeah yeah turn it into a, a hose a, reel you know, wide tire. yeah exactly <laughs> hey, that's actually a pretty exactly. smart idea like <laughs> um <laughs> well i said that because i when i was thinking i have i pulled out a really bitchin gold and aluminum raider wheel just yep. on my buddy mark and i totally would love to use that amount of hose on but they probably don't <laughs> yeah well, i'm sure i'm not gonna do that yeah yeah but yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because you talk about like you know we, we earlier we were talking about things come and go. If if I could do one thing, it would be go back to the mm-hmm. early two thousands, and then mm-hmm. just unscrupulously make a shit ton of money making wide tire bikes and selling them for sixty seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> all the while yep. using that money and buying up all cool bikes that I could save for now to build. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what I would do, yep. man, for sure. Like. I can't even believe it because you know I was too punk rock back then. I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Like people, fuck, fuck that shit. Like you know, you know, I was all about well, yeah, you know, what I, I was about. That shit. Yeah, me too. And I was like, but those guys laughed their way to the fucking bank and then got out. You know what I mean? And it was just oh like, my god, oh, I know they, they were smart business Crazy. guys, I guess, or or, or just fell into I the guess. right thing, you know. But well, I think a lot of that timing more than anything else. Yeah, just for sure. But a lot yeah, of people right jumped on that, that bandwagon right away and, oh, and sure. made shit ton of money back then. Yeah. Not a lot of people made complete garbage. And, oh, yeah. But there was still, in that garbage, there was still, you know, lights of stuff. There was some quality stuff done, too. You know? Yeah, but, yeah. It's just crazy yeah, just, to me. Like I don't know. The big the big wheel badger thing is just as bad to me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. I saw, I saw a guy this morning on my way in, and he's just like, with a fucking like 30 inch front wheel and it was that big, you know, and yeah. a little tiny, cute little girl on the back and his bags were just about was all stretched out like three feet. I was like, wow, that's really awful. Yeah. And I'm just like, Ugh, really? you know, you know, I try not to judge it. You know, there's an ask for every seat, but I just don't get no, like, I, I agree. I mean, I, people love that. I, get, I don't get yeah, it, but I got it. Like, I didn't like it, but I got it with choppers because choppers are, like, wacky and, like, crazy and whatever. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, And people right. were making just even crazier ones. Like, it was just, like, a pissing contest. Like, how it was in the 70s on who could have the longer front end. It was, like, who could have the widest tire and blah, blah, blah. 
But oh, with for the, sure. But with the big wheel baggers, you're taking a touring bike that's meant to be like a long range bike, and you're making it unrideable. Right. It's dumb. Like choppers yeah. were always kind of could be unrideable. Like you know, you didn't yeah. aim for that, but like it was more accepted. But like you're taking a bike right. that's meant to be a distance bike, and you're making it where you probably don't even want to ride it down the fucking street. You know what I mean? Like oh my god, I know. It's, it's just Especially silly. now, all the guys doing that with brand new baggers and. Harley, to give them a little bit of credit, the 09 and later bagger, yeah. they handle like a fucking sportster, dude. They fucking handle amazing. Yeah, sure. They don't yeah. feel like a big bike. They're light. They don't feel big. They work fucking bitching. Yep. You know, and then you go and you fuck it up. You fuck it up, with yeah. With that fucking 26-inch front wheel. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, oh. awful. I hate it. Uh, there's a, there's, <clears> a, throat> guy, throat> there's throat> a guy there's a, there's a guy near us that does a lot of that work, so we don't really get asked to do that really so that's good which is good and you know honestly not for nothing i i um me, me and the guys at my shop we will spend a lot of time with the customer trying to talk them out of things that we think that they're not <laughs> going to be happy with you know what i mean like right at the end of the day it's yep. like you th- you think you want a 30 inch wheel because it looks cool but do you plan to ride this bike long distances yeah then you don't right. want that like and you're going to spend a right. lot of money to find out you don't want that or you can <laughs> trust me like you know what i mean like right. I, I'm I'm doing the opposite of a business guy here. I'm trying to talk you out of things so that right. you're happier well, on your bike. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. When I was when I was running the service department at Vic, um, it got to a point where he wouldn't let me talk to customers anymore. <laughs> so they come back and talk to me, and he'd have he'd have them like set on this, a car, and a cam, and pipes, and blah, blah, all this list of shit. And I talk to them for five minutes, and I'm like, and they come back up front. Oh, I just want to do this. Yeah. And he's all, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> but I'm like. I, I'm not, I mean, I get it. He's trying to make money and whatever, but I'm just like, you know what? I talk to these people and they pay what they want. They don't need all that other bullshit. It really doesn't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? It depends on the situation, of course, but you know, it's like, he would be so mad at me because I talked him out of all this other shit and crazy to this and crazy that. And I'm like, you just need this and this and this and you should be totally happy. Yeah. So he wouldn't let me talk to customers after that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, you know. Because I'm like, you know, I'm trying to be the voice of reason, and I want them to be happy with what they got, you know, yeah. so. But that's the thing, though, is you if, you, if you make ha- people happy and they see you're coming from, like, an honest place, then you got a customer for life, right. you know, usually. Not always, yeah, but, sure. you know, a lot of times. Then some guy, yeah. if not, some guy will go to the place that will sell them a fucking $7,000 front, you know, 30-inch wheel and, you know, kit right. for, to, for their bike and then make it not fun to ride. and. Wasn't me that did it. Exactly. Remember that. You yeah, know what no, I mean? I got you. For sure. Uh, I don't I don't I mean and that's and that's true sometimes too, because I had a guy that I did a bunch I built a sho- a big inch shovel motor for him, fucking probably ninety seven or ninety or maybe ninety eight or ninety nine at Vic and um he was kind of freaked out and kind of sketchy on, but he got it and he liked it. And then like when I was working for Jesse, my wife at the time was living or working in Burbank. And I would take the train up from Long Beach and meet her for dinner and we'd come back, right? And so one day I'm on the train and who's on the train but that guy who owns that shovel head, <laughs> you know? And he said to me, he's like, dude, I'm so stoked. That bike still runs so great. I'm so happy with what you did, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that was a big deal for me because I was like, fuck, that's awesome, you know? Because it's nice to hear that, especially when the guy wasn't really sure on it, but he was super stoked on what, on how he was treated or whatever, you know? Yeah. And that was, that was nice. So that doesn't always happen. It's nice to have that happen once in a while. Sure. Yeah. You instead of having people instead of people throwing bricks at you. Yeah. Yeah. That's no fun yeah. People are quicker <laughs> quicker to to give you a shout when uh, when they're pissed than they are when uh, when, exactly. when they're stoked. And it is always yeah. good to get those calls, and and we're always appreciative of that as well. And oh, for it's sure, a, it's a good thing, you know, for sure. But um, yeah, for sure. But uh, what else going on? You got any new? Uh, I know, I know. You know, right now you're you're working on reorganizing everything. But do you got some uh, more parts and stuff in, in store? Well, in, I mean, in, uh, I'm still I'm I'm almost ready to do the the twin cam cam cover. Just like a, yeah. it's a simple kind of looks like a Burkhart cover for a shovel head, you know, yep. for a Evo or a shovel head with fins, and it's super simple. But I just need to test fit one with a thunder header for guys. You know, yeah. I got that, and then I just thought, you know, I'm probably going to do a thing in a couple of months. Well, I'll just do whatever you want on your foot pegs. For I'll do like because I do custom foot pegs all the time. Yeah, people. yeah. Because it's not that hard for me to do, and it's not that crazy money. So it's easy for me to do. But I just I've never really put it out there like that. Saying, hey, anything you want between three and you know five letters is this price. Anything you want, if you want artwork is this price, and I'm going to do a whole run of shit like that. Because the way I've got with the foundry, I can do shit like that. That's cool. And I might do that. At, I might do that at some point. But right yeah. now, it's just it's the twin cam cam cover I want to finish. That's cool. Because I think it I think it should sell well because a lot of people, you know, 
it's just kind of a neat thing and no one really the only ones you get like the Roland Sands one with the windows in it and then there's like the place the, the EMD from France has big giant fins in it and yeah, you know those, those just, are, I think it's something in the middle big, that, yeah <clears throat> yeah they're super big but then I'm trying to you know I got a bunch of other shit in the works too but you know right now it's mostly just I'm just trying to get caught up on all my shipping stuff and customer stuff right now and just blasting stuff really Fuck yeah. you know, I mean the vapor blasting stuff pretty fucking bitching it works pretty amazing yeah. And I'm blown away by it. Yeah. I mean, I have a, you know, a patented head sitting here that I did half the head and left the half as it was. And it's just, it's crazy how nice it is. It's such yeah. a bitching finish. It's so much nicer than the regular glass bead. It's so much easier to deal with because, like, glass bead, you spend forever getting all that shit out. Yeah. You know, after you glass bead something, but you do it in a, in a wet system, it comes out with the water. It doesn't stick and stuff because sure. it won't come out of the water until the water evaporates. Huh, you know what yeah, I mean? It doesn't. Yeah. It, it works different, and I'm super happy with it. And I'm glad I'm doing it because I need to find just something else. You can you, you know, do like pink stuff like I like. I'm sorry. Um, you you could, but you know, something like that, you're better off just sandblast. Yeah, yeah. Because it's gonna get painted or whatever, you know. But yep. for small stuff like engine parts and aluminum shit like that, it's fucking amazing. Huh. But then again, I've done all kinds. I did like a I did like a brass um, elevator the plate, you know, where the thing goes over when you the door closes. I don't know what it's called threshold plate, I guess, for an yep. elevator a brass one that was like 80 years old and I blasted it. It fucking looks amazing. You know? So it's, there's a lot of neat things going on with that, but sure. we, yeah, I don't know. Parts wise. I mean, yeah, I'm always doing new parts and I've always have stuff I'm working on just because most of the parts I make come from, Hey, I, would you ever want to make this? Or I want this. And I'll be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I can make one of those. Like a lot of stuff I've made now, like the, a fin with a triangular cover for Sportster for the module cover, you know, it's like a guy wanted one and I made one and it became a production part for me, you know? Yeah, and that's a lot, a lot, how a lot of that stuff comes, you know. And then just doing more custom stuff is all. And I'm always trying to do that for people, shops and shit like that. Yeah, you know. But I still want to do some stuff, some chopperhead stuff. Yeah, yeah. At some we, point we get around we, to it. Yeah, I know. You know, it's, when, just, when, it's just getting over the hurdles and doing it. Yeah. Well, when you been get uh, for years, I know. I know we've been talking about it for a long time. When you get uh, when yeah. you get all situated and back up and running and yeah. caught up, you know, we'll, we'll talk. I don't want to put any more pressure <laughs> on you. You know what I mean? But I do want to uh, see a picture. Caught up? I didn't know what caught up means. What's yeah. That? Well, you know, when you get it, when you get a little lot. little extra breathing room, not not total breathing mm-hmm. room, but when you're a little bit better, <laughs> hit me up. Yeah. But, I do want to see a picture of that uh, vapor blast and shit. If you send me a picture of that head uh, when you can. Sure. Um, yeah, 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 I'll do it right now. So when we get off the this, we'll send you a picture. Fuck yeah, man. That's I, Yeah, I, it's, it's neat. It's a, it's a neat system. And it's just like, if I've been looking for something like this, it's just more of a basic service like that I can do for yeah. people that people would be stoked on that isn't working on bikes. I mean, it yeah. is, but it isn't. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Other than doing service work, because that's, you got to keep parts in stock. You got to stay on top of oh, all that stuff. This so is just expensive, service, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I needed to try to shift it into something that's a little easier, per se. Yeah. Just to, it doesn't involve a ton of other stuff, you know, that's pretty straightforward, you know. Yeah. Does so, it take up, does the system it. take a lot of room? Well, I mean, I have, I have two, I have three different cabinets now and blast cabinets in the shop. Yeah. Uh, well, two blast cabinets and one's a degreaser, which is fucking unbelievable. The one I got from Vapor Hone Technology. It's huh. the best degreaser I've ever used by, it's amazing. Nice. But I have my original D blaster that, I'm still in the process of repairing because I've had it for 25 years. But I'll have silica carbide in that I use for stripping, like cleaning combustion chambers and shit like that. Yeah. Should it's harder to get off um, instead of actually sandblasting. And yeah. then the vapor home machine itself. So, yeah, I have a wall of quarter in my shop that's using the three machines in it. Okay. Yeah. So, but then it was just it was just getting all the airlines run and all the shit sure. that goes along with yeah. it. Yeah, getting it all made set it up. take yeah. longer. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah, I want to see that. I've heard about it, but I don't know anyone that, sure. that has a setup. So, uh, I, uh, yeah, for sure. I'll send you some pictures for sure. Fuck yeah, it's, man! It's amazing. It's such a bitch and finish. Yeah. It lasts better. It's, it's way less because regular glass bead. It really because of impacts or whatnot. It really leaves an open surface that absorbs dirt and sure. whatnot. You know? I always thought that. And too, this really kind of this really kind of seals it. It works like shot cleaning because it isn't just doing it by impact. It's doing it by flowing over it. It smooths the surface. So it kind of seals the surface. So like if you glass bead, so you put your thumb, like a dirty thumbprint on it, on a glass beaded part, and then do it on a vapor blasted part. You can just wipe it's like it you off. You can wipe it right off the vapor blasted part, but it's going to be a little harder to get off just the regular yeah. glass beaded part. Yeah. You know, because it kind of sucks it in. So yeah. it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty stoked that I went that direction. I mean, it would have been nicer if I would have done it way sooner sure. or later, just because timing wise, I spent a ton of money doing all that. And then the world ends. 
Yeah. So it's been sort of a weird year, but you know. Yeah, yeah. And I've been, uh, you know, and it's like I've done less of it recently because I haven't really been pushing it. And I've just been like kind of anti-social media for a little while, just trying to get my life back to order. But, yeah. You know, it's all good. I'm still here. I'm still working. You know. Yeah. Fuck good. yeah, man. Well, it's like you said though. Like you're taking time to fucking get your shit reorganized. I have. Re- I have to, dude. I I can't. That's the thing. I, I'm at a point where it's like I can't function otherwise. Yeah. You know, I need to get it to a point where I can function better and then everything runs smoother. You know, when you got to force yourself to function in a situation that's difficult or a mess or hard to deal with, it's hard to get shit done. It's yeah. hard to be happy with the stuff you're doing, you know? Oh, absolutely. So I'm trying to get that done and make it a little bit smoother and then just, you know, try to get stuff running smoother. You know, because I got a million other things I want to do too on top of it. I have a whole thing. I'm going to start making longboard fins. You know, with iron crosses in them. Nice. No one's ever done that. I just, I just blew it by saying that, but whatever. I don't care. No, no. You know, and they're, gonna, and they're gonna have fucking, and they're gonna have metal flake in them. So I'm not to yeah. sell them. It's like you know, beware may attract shark. Yeah. You know, so whatever. But I just got all kinds of little shit like that I want to do too. You know. Yep. Well, that I just yeah. don't have time for. That hopefully I get caught up to the point where I can actually do some stuff that's more fun like that, like on the weekends or whatever. You know, just that. You know. Different stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. Just uh, more creative stuff. Just things to yeah, keep things like interesting. To start, I'd like to start shooting girls again too at some point. If the shop's yeah. less of a nightmare, that'd probably be even better. <laughs> but you know, yeah. like I said before, that that brings a whole other level of just difficulty to it. <laughs> now, what, what what would you do? Just keep putting the, put that on your website, or is it, or, or are you shooting? For... I you know I don't know. I mean, I shoot generally when I do it. I just shoot. I trade for content so the yeah. chicks can do whatever they want with it. So if they you know. I'll use a handful of things and like stuff for promo stuff and like, you know, I don't know, maybe an ad or something, but they can use it on their only fans page that every chick has right now, Yeah, you know, for, for so they can sell content that way, you know, but yeah, that's the thing. It's like, when I was shooting girls. I was still writing for, um, chopper journal, Japan, you know, yeah. and I'd always just give them real pictures. I mean, not, you know, super dirty ones, but yeah, I'd no. always give them, they go into print in Japan or whatever, you know, but like I'm not writing for them anymore because they're, they're doing it differently now. So it's just like, I'm not, what do you do with them? You know, yeah. But if you can make, you know, if you can get the chick stuff they can use, then it works out good for everybody. So I can just have more stuff for whatever. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know, that I end up using it for. But because I have tons and tons of content that you know, I no one's ever going to see because I don't, you know, how what do I do with it? Yeah. You know, people don't pay for that stuff anymore. You know, because no. as much as they should, because you know, it's not an easy thing to make all that content. But you no. know, everyone gets everything gets stolen by the internet, and everyone, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, I know, but that's what I mean. That that's one of the sad things about the death of like print magazines. Is that there's like it's yeah, like it, exactly. it doesn't. It's not just the magazine going out of business. It's the writers. It's the photographers. Right. Like it's going to mm-hmm. be less incentive for people to want to get into photography for 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 for, for magazines or like commercial type oh, photography sure. because there's not going to be any outlets. And it's like once you post it, like the whole world can take it. Like so, even if right. you got a watermark yeah, on but, it, that doesn't matter. You know. Oh, for sure. But that's the thing now. Everyone with an iPhone now is a professional photographer too, though. Sure. You know, because the fucking phones and cameras and phones are fucking amazing. Yeah. They're they, they, you know, doing is, everything they can to mimic like professional lenses now too. It's like mm-hmm. you take, oh, for you, sure. you take pictures like, oh shit, where was that taken? That was my phone, dude, you know? <laughs> for sure. It's crazy. You yeah. know, and that's another thing too is because I'm trying to shoot more film than anything now when I shoot. Yep. Because I really like film. <laughs> Well, and that's... all the films that I really like are disappearing as well because there's no pack film Polaroid anymore. You know, like the big camera, like the land camera from the 70s that you put the film in and you take it out and you peel it off, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was my favorite shit. I love that. I think in hundreds and hundreds of pictures of that shit because the film was always like a dollar a shot. Yeah. Like, ever. And then Fuji says, hey, we're going to let's continue this. And then it was $26 for a pack of 10. And now those same packs of 10 are selling for $100 on the internet. That's crazy. You know, because no one's remaking it. Yeah. And if anyone remakes it, it's going to be crazy expensive anyway. Yeah. You know, because... To tool the, up and you know, do it, the, yeah, the, the process. The machinery to make yeah. up all gone. Fuji sold all that shit. It's all gone. You know, and, the, you know, it's just, you know, it's not the same. You yeah. Know? But I'm shooting... I have an, a ca- old camera that was my dad's, and I have two old cameras that were my dad's that I've been shooting with film-wise. A Mamiya and um, a lo- old light guy that's really bitching, so... Yeah, man. Or maybe, maybe you should get back in and bring Tintype back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. But that's a, that's a whole other complicated, expensive process too. Yeah, now, all those guys that do that at shows and stuff—that's super neat. Oh, it's cool. Super neat. It's fucking rad. Super like, neat. Um, yeah, super neat. Now, with with when you shoot on film, like, where are you getting? Are mm-hmm. you developing it yourself, or do you have to send it out to get processed? No, no I, I send it out. But there's, a, I have a place in Signal Hill that's super fast and super cheap, 
Bomax, who does amazing work. You know, because I really like to, I like shooting slide film, but it's getting harder and harder to find decent slide film. Yeah. Yes, Kodak re-release Ektachrome, but I don't know how long that's going to last. <laughs> you know, but yeah. you know, I there's a couple of films like the Fuji Velvia. It's my favorite. Super oversaturated color wise. It's so fucking bitchin' looking. You know, but it's harder to get the film. It's just you know they're making less and less of that shit, and at some point it's all going to disappear. You end up with all this lomography you know, hipster camera film, which is okay, but it's not as, you know, it's neat for getting like old timey. Yes, it was shot on film and it's fucked up looking. Yeah. But when you want to take really good pictures on film, you want really good film. Yeah. You know, I don't see Kodak going anywhere away, but you know, who knows? Yep. Who, who knows where it's all going? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, as things get more and more digital, it's, it's, mm -hmm. It's it's like anything though, but there could be a resurgence. Like I mean, vinyl was dead and came back. You know, maybe yeah. maybe oh, the oh, film shit will come. You know what I mean? Like you, you'll, you'll well, see. Well, I think I think there's a I think there's a huge group of people that want it. Yeah, you know what I mean? They want it to come back. They absolutely want film, and they want people fighting for packed film and you know all that shit. Yeah, you know. But I don't know if it's actually going to happen. It's really expensive, and if it comes back, it's really expensive to make. Yeah. You know, because there was Bob Crowley that did the new 55 thing where he was making a four by five instant film that would give you a usable negative and a positive, but they were crazy expensive and it was crazy, like, inconsistent, oh, you know, and it was yeah. just so expensive that it just kind of went away. It just didn't yeah. stop doing it because it doesn't, you know, it's so, you need millions and millions of dollars to make money doing that to have a sustainable way of doing it. Sure. You know, and how many people out there are shooting four by five? medium or cameras anymore not yeah. that many yeah, but yeah. yes they want it people that there's people that want it but it's not really enough for them to you know risk putting millions and millions of dollars to bring it back yeah you know? yeah yeah because they would also have to do a, but, yeah you know. they would have to do a huge marketing campaign to develop interest in it as well like to to, to kind of broaden it out to get more of a yeah a but i don't think base. i don't think they would that's the thing i don't think they'd yeah. be able to do it i don't think they'd be able to build a consumer base i think the only people that would want that stuff are the people that want it right now that are already into it and then yeah. i don't and i think there's i think you may you might get one percent it might think oh that looks really neat i want to try that yeah. you know because yes you can buy film cameras relatively cheap <laughs> you know, on the internet and use shit and fix old shit. And there's tons of that shit out there, you know, but it's just, you know, is there, are there really enough people that are going to get into it new to make it viable? Probably not. Yeah. You know, and I've got, a, I've got a handful of boxes of that shit and it's just like gold to me. Cause I don't even want to use it. Whenever I would shoot a girl, I'd take like a whole roll of that shit. And now it's like a hundred dollars worth of film. Do you, you know? And it's just, I'll take like two or three every time I do it. But it's, yeah, it's, you know, I don't even want to use it anymore. Does that have a shelf life on it? Do you have to use it by a certain time? I mean, obviously, well, if you expires. take care of it, it right. Expires. Yeah, it expires, and you should keep it in a refrigerator, and it's in my refrigerator. You know, but yeah, it has a shelf life, but that's the thing, too. People like expired film because it's unpredictable what it does. Yeah, you can get some wacky shit coming way, out of it, yeah. Yeah, you get weird colors and light flares and all kinds of other bullshit, you know. But yeah, it's, you know, people like that, too. And I, you know, it's neat because you can get stuff. You get pictures with film, you'd never be able to get with it. yeah. You know, it just, but there's it's also so probably the interpret <laughs> there's also probably a shot that you know would have been a killer shot, but now it's got some weird fucking anomaly in it, and you're like, damn, that that's, would have been a good that, shot. <laughs> that's for sure, that absolutely can happen too, for sure. You know, but that's it's, part it's of the, the game, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But if you got good quality film and you know what you're doing, yeah, you can make shit perfect with film. You know, because yeah. all the guys that were doing film forever make it perfect. You know. <laughs> You know, but now when you're dealing with old, uh, old film, old cameras, all the, you know, people wanting it to look a certain way, then that's where you get, that's where it's different. You know, and I'm sure, because that was a little like Lomography did that for a while. They were selling all their shit at Urban Outfitters, those fucking junky plastic cameras would have light leaks and you never knew what you're going to get completely out of the pictures. You know, that yeah. was like a big thing for a while, but then the film is just, it's just the film's gotten expensive and there's less of it out there, you know, so it kind of killed itself. I think, I don't know. It's still fun shit for sure, but it's just less people doing it. So yeah. I don't really ever see it coming back like I would like it to. But eh, yeah. whatever. You know, dude, you know who I got to connect you to? And um, 
Mm. This guy is Sandy. He's an older gentleman. He he lives out here. Mm -hmm. He's he's you know in his I think he's in his, he's in his like seventies or maybe his eighties. Yep. He still comes out to all the local motorcycle shows and shoots pictures. But yeah, he he awesome. he was a staff photographer for Easy Rider and Choppers magazines and all these magazines in like the fucking seventies. Uh, and he's been shooting, oh, wow. shooting bikes since the sixties. Um, and I interviewed him because I'm doing that. I'm doing like a, a show. Like you remember the Chophead DVDs? I'm doing a show that yeah, is, sure. is uh, based on those, but it's going to be like little 20 minute episodes on uh, on oh, Am nice. on Amazon cool. uh, Prime. And uh, we got nice. the first five almost done, and one whole episode is him. But he still oh, shoots, God. man. He still shoots, and he's oh, like a awesome. fucking awesome dude to talk to. You would love him, man. So if you ever come out here, we'll go hang out with him, or uh, you know, okay, if you ever sure. want to like touch base with him he's just a good guy to talk to and he loves oh, it like he like nerds out on like old chopper shit and film and like like i said he was a staff yeah, photographer awesome. for a lot of these magazines when you could have a staff photographer position you know what right. i mean and um, oh for sure and he's he's from out here but he moved to cali and and he used to roll oh, okay. with the, the dudes over at aee choppers and all that and do a lot yeah. of their advertisements take all those photos because you know he worked well, for their magazines and all that his name's sandy what's, what's his name sandy is his name? Um, uh, now I'm talking about doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, hmm, I'll, 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 get, I'll get you guys. His, it, I, I'll uh, tag okay. you in one of his posts on Instagram too. Is his, his? I think. Oh his, yeah, for sure. His nickname is like Sandy, aka Jake, or something like that on Instagram. I, I'll I'll, uh, I'll tag okay. you on something and then uh, introduce you guys because I think you'd really hit it off with him. And he's like a wealth of knowledge, and he's like the coolest guy ever. And and it's rad because oh, he's got a lot of health issues, but he'll still be out. He's like working on a couple of bikes that he's trying to build for himself, right. and he's got people helping him. And he still goes to like every single local show and he's out there taking pictures and stuff and he's still That's he's awesome. still doing and he'll do film or he'll sometimes he just shoots on his phone because he you know he's it's just right. tough to do film but you know like all a bunch of the old classic like fucking 60s 70s 80s like stuff like like you know he, mm -hmm. he he shot a lot of classic features and shit like so um yeah man you, you guys should definitely talk i think you guys would have a good time and uh, okay. have a lot to talk yeah, about for sure. so i'll do that that's but, neat you're doing that on amazon prime too yeah, that brings up too that Amazon. There's so much weird shit on Amazon Prime. I love it. Oh, absolutely. So much weird shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like I was saying the other day. I got sucked into watching all these thrash metal documentaries. Which yeah. Was fucking awesome. That's fucking cool. <laughs> so I, good. I know. I got to look that up. I've been. I've been. Like, no matter what you put in, no matter what wacky topic you put in, like, I'll put in mm -hmm. something on, like, psychedelics, or I'll put something on, like, old 60s biker movies, or whatever, right. um, or alien yeah. shit, or whatever. Like, so much <laughs> shit comes up. I'm like, holy fuck, how do they have this much shit? Like, it's like, it's like, it's like Netflix for, like, fucking dirt heads. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like... Oh, totally. Like, d Netflix is, like, has such a procured, like... And, and I like Netflix, whatever. I'm not slamming Netflix. Sure. Though, but they have such, like, a procured, like, collection where... Whereas like like fucking Amazon Prime's like wild west of wackiness if you start looking in it. Oh, totally. And it, it'll start and like then you, and then you look at one you look at one thing and then you go down and then yeah. you'll have this is related to this. Oh yeah. And you just go down these fucking rabbit holes and Absolutely. fucking weird shit. And yeah. like punk rock shit or music shit or more yeah. all of it. It's yeah. fucking awesome. I love it. Yeah. And it's like, so and, then, good. and then the suggestions for you when they start coming up and it's like creepily a oh, accurate, you're like, oh shit, I would love that. Like, how does it know I like that? Like, you know what I mean? The fucking, <laughs> oh shit. Like, totally. that's that's when like AI and technology is like, eh, it's not so bad, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. Puts me on a creepy thrash documentary from like 87 oh, or something, totally. you know, whatever. Totally. Or, or like a fucking Absolutely. thing on DMT Any or something. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's neat shit. It's, the problem it's crazy is all the shit that's on there. The problem is, is that you know, and I think with you too, like I worked through the whole fucking COVID thing. If I if I didn't mm -hmm. have worked through the COVID thing, like I would have been Amazon uh -huh. priming it the fuck up. And, For sure. And just so, lest anyone knows, like or dares to say, Amazon is in no way, shape, or form a, a, a sponsor. I'm just talking about some shit like <laughs> that. Like me and Dave were talking earlier about all the fucking rad, funny, weird, off the wall shit they have uh, on that. Uh, For sure. On that, so uh, you know. I, I know a lot of ways Amazon is the enemy when it comes to like motorcycle parts and stuff, but for, for fucking on screen <laughs> entertainment, you yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. They just put a lot of stuff up there. You'd never would think you'd actually be able to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's neat. There's it's, so much weird shit. Absolutely. And, like, <laughs> and, and any fucking topic, there's like, you, you put it mm -hmm. in and there's, there's a fucking rabbit hole waiting for you to jump down. For sure. 
but fuck yeah, man. Awesome. Dude, anything else that we haven't talked about? I mean, I mean, I you I know, fuck, I, guess, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like fuck, I don't know. We could talk for we could talk for another six hours if you want. I know, I know. I, <laughs> just, know, I mean, there's so much shit that you and I could actually go into like that. I don't know. I know, I know. It's fucking oh, good. Crazy. Whatever. I feel like you know, and I say this a lot, but I, I, when we do it over the phone, I get it. It's cool, like you know. And, and this was a fucking awesome talk. But with, like, if next right. time I'm out there, if you're ever out here, we got to do one in person because it's so much. Oh fuck yeah, different, for sure. You know what I mean? You. And, and we'll totally. get into fun and fun shit. You know what I mean? But um, totally. But, but fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Um, it, it was fucking uh, great to have you here and uh, over the phone oh, fuck at least. Yeah, I was stoked to do it. I'm yeah. stoked we finally hooked up to do it. You know? Yeah, I've known you a long time and I respect you. And you're like, you know, you're like an old friend in this whole industry. You know, yeah. and that's, there's not that many of those left. No, no, know? there's some, but it's just it's neat because you know you and I have been doing the same thing forever. You know, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, fuck it's cool yeah. to connect and talk about how much it's changed just in the time that you and I have been doing. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and it's just, and every, and we've all been doing, you know, it's like you've had your thing and I've been all over the place because I've done so many different things yeah. likewise, you know, but it's just like, you know, it's, it's all good. You know, it all comes down to that we're doing this shit because we love it. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, there's a That's lot more shit we could I'm be here. doing that would be a lot more probably uh, potentially more lucrative with our time, but for sure, we, you, we for make sure. the active choice to do this because it's, because it's, we we almost don't have a choice, you know. That's like uh yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what else I do. You know, yeah. Everything I've done on some level, all the writing, photography, you know, different, all that shit, yeah. all motorcycle events. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's like how my whole how my whole life has been built. I mean, all the friends that I have now are all because of motorcycles somehow. You know, yeah. yep. it's so it's so neat how connected everything is. And if you really look at everything, it all goes back to motorcycles. Yeah. Be it choppers, be it stock bikes, be it jack bikes, be it this, be it that. You know, it's yeah. all connected. Absolutely. And it's so neat that it that it's like that. You know. Yeah. And then it and brings there's so many people that <clears throat> that you know are just that's the connection. You know, and that's a huge connection for people because motorcycles aren't an essential thing. Nope. You let you have a motorcycle because you want to ride a motorcycle. Yeah. You know? And if you want to ride a motorcycle, you like riding a motorcycle, then we already have that in common. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. As much as I don't like people, quote unquote. People, yeah. yeah, you know, I love motorcycles, yep. and that hasn't gone anywhere. Even all the, the you know times I've had gnarly slumps and I want to do something different, but it comes down to it's never the motorcycle. It's always the people, the drama, the scene, or that scene, or whatever. You know, it's never the motorcycles that made me not want to do it. You know, it's always all the stuff connected to the motorcycle. Yeah, you know, so I've kind of managed to kind of stay connected to motorcycles but try to keep a safe distance from all the drama that goes along with them. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Cause I've really, cause I've kind of, cause that's, cause if I had to be in the middle of it with all the people and shops and this and that, I'd lose my shit. Yeah. You know, I'm just not good at that, you know, and I'm, that's not really what I want, but I want to keep doing it. And I love what I'm doing. And I love this shit. I love making shit. I love making parts, machining shit, all that shit, you know, but it's just, that's my love for it. My love isn't all the other stuff. Yeah, you know, and I've been fortunate to make some lifelong friends that I'll have for the rest of my life because of motorcycles. You know, oh, but yeah. it all comes down to the core of motorcycles themselves. Yeah. You know, be it choppers or whatever. You know. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's true. And it's like you know, it's like uh, it's like weird because it's like you got to love for the motorcycles. It's just the scene around motorcycles, you know, and the people that can uh, fuck it up. But it doesn't mean you don't love motorcycles any less. It's just that you you no, might want to sure. be around certain things less. You know what I mean? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. But it's like that with anything, exactly. dude. Any of our little worlds, yeah, right. of, no, you know, like right. punk rock and or hardcore or whatever and metal and, 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 yeah, and tattoos. All yeah. It's, it's all, all like the, that, yeah. It's all very. It's all the same. All the same, man. And it's, it's, all, like, and it's, all, and it's all become mainstream and we're mad that all of it's all mainstream now, but. You know, we still love it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, <laughs> th th you know, there's 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 layers to all this shit, man. And there's you know, like someone like the more mainstream layer isn't the layer that we live on, you know. And 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 right. and their layer is not a our layer is a layer that they wouldn't be ready for, you know what I mean, or want to be on. Or oh, whatever, for sure. You know, and so it's it's cool. Like you you stay in your lane, and I'll stay in mine. You know, <laughs> it's fucking yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what's normal and good to me isn't normal and good to the next guy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but like I have a core of there's a core of people that what's normal and weird, n normal and awesome to me is yeah. normal and awesome to them. Yeah. But other people still don't get it. But that's okay. Yeah. Because you know, not everybody has to get it. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean, dude. I, I, it's 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 a, it's a cr- cr- crazy worlds that we uh, that we uh, bounce around in, and, and uh, oh, for sure. But you know, and they're all, I, and they're all connected now too. That's the neat thing too. Yeah. Punk rock and like that's like we said earlier, like the the fuckboard choppers and punk rock is it's the same thing. It's the yeah. same form. Dude, I was so you know, it's stoked. Just a, it's just that. Good. Oh, I was gonna say, like when I was young and, and younger, and and just uh, coming around all this shit, like, like out here, I was like one of the only hardcore dudes that were into like in like I was an early adopter into choppers and motorcycles. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> awesome. Me and some of yeah. my friends, you know. So I didn't know a lot yeah. of people that were in it because like when you'd go to bike shows out here, it was still a lot of just like the more quote unquote like biker type dudes. You know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. you know like in in whatever old school type biker dudes or like gray beard right. type dudes and they you know like the punk rock hardcore stuff like what had an infiltrate. Now most of the people you meet like you know. It's weird if they're not from a punk hardcore background or thrash or whatever, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. It's, it's like yeah, weird, yeah, you know, sure. like, but it was always like the next step. Like, you know, you, you know, you're, 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 you're allowed fast, dangerous rules. You know what I mean? Like, like that, yeah. that, that transcends, For you sure. know, you know, I know it was an old hardcore seven inch, but it also, you know, it's yep. also a fucking, you know, it, 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 it transcends sure. every, all the worlds we're involved in, you know? And, and, and exactly. It absolutely does. Cause it's that, that's, doesn't matter what it is. I and mean, I'm not, it's like, it's like, I'm not really good at moderation. Yeah. You know? And it's <laughs> like, I, you got, I'm all in with all this shit. And like, that's the shit that I love. That the shit you can tell when people are all in, it's different. Yeah. you know, it becomes real. It becomes, you know, pure, you know? And that's just the way that, you know, I've always looked at all of it like that, you know, Absolutely. music and bikes and all that shit. So I, I don't, I don't know how to, and I'm not good at, I can't really get half into anything. No. <laughs> I just can't, you know, so yeah. that's just what happens and that's just the way it is. I find you know, if I, if I get halfway into something, it's something that is just like a very like passing fancy that might like take up like two days of my life and that's about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Sure. No, I don't got time for that. You know, like, you know, pretty yeah, much sure. right off the rip, like if that's going to be something that is incorporated or not, you know? Of course. Absolutely. But yeah, fuck yeah, man. What, what, uh, where can people, uh, uh, find your stuff, you know, and if you give, give some plugs for your, um, for your you websites still, and uh, you know, all that. Chop, chopper, da- I mean, I'm chopper Dave on everything. Yeah. Chopperdaves.com. And that'll take you to the original site, my new site, the main site, the business site, my original, my blog, everything. Yeah. You know? And then chopper Dave is on Instagram and on every, and everything else pretty much. Yeah. So, you know, go yeah, to the some, website. Some po- Go to the website yeah, and get, point, get caught up on the history right, of what's going on, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, at some point, too, we're working on some YouTube stuff, too. So I don't know when we're actually going to do it, but I have some pretty idiotic, stupid YouTube shit we're going to shoot. Fuck yeah. You know, and I want to that's the thing. I'd like, I'd like to start doing some podcasts with some people because I know a lot of neat people. Sure, of course. And there's a lot of neat people that I think people would fucking love to hear their story from a different perspective. Yeah. You know? And that's, and at some point we'll start doing that. We're not really there yet, but yeah. it'll happen at some point, you know, but. And then off my, it, I'm just, you know, let me know when you want to do that, dude. And however I can help you okay, get started. Sure. Cause I've gone through some of the motions on all this shit. So like, you know, like okay. I had, I had a guy that really helped me out, you know, and, and I don't mind, uh, you know, uh, d- doing the same, you know, right on. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right, but, but it's also, it's just like, I want to do like some tech stuff too, because so much of it's so awful. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I mean, just put the camera on what you're showing. I, I had to replace <laughs> something on my truck the other day and I'm looking at a YouTube video. I'm like, come on. Like the main thing is like phones just like half an inch off and you couldn't see what he was shooting. I'm like, really? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. There's easy things you can do to make stuff better. And you know, I, you know, I think, I think people would get a kick out of some of that. And sure. Fuck yeah. If I can help some people out to get some information out there to help people out, that'd be great too. You know? Absolutely. And, and, and it's, it, I think it's harder and harder to get credible information. now. Yeah. I was just going to say tech, you know? tech advice is like COVID information. Like there's a ton of it out there and a lot mm-hmm. of it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you, you know, sure. and, and that's one of the biggest banes dude, when someone comes in with their bike and they've already 
diagnosed it. I'm like, how do you know that? Well, yeah. you know, online, these guys on this forum are telling this and that. And it's like, you know, I don't give a fuck what some dudes online were saying in the forum. <laughs> like, I, I do not give a fuck. I put no credence into that for you, diagnosing your bike yep. right here. And like, let's, yep. like, you know who, you know, and so, you know, but whatever. You know? <laughs> but it's like, you know, uh, it'll be good for you to, to put out some stuff like that because it'll come from a credible source with uh, backed by three decades in the industry, you know, and, and, and actively oh, working terrifying. on motorcycles, you know, um, yep. and, 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 and not some fucking dildo fucking with a camera and just be like, oh, I changed my oil so I can do this and t- tell you how to do this now, too, you know, like whatever. Exactly. <laughs> No, not that I, I, you know, I'm not trying to stifle people from getting out there and doing shit. I'm just, oh, for just sure. saying, no, you know, it. like motorcycles have two wheels and people can potentially die pretty easy. So don't, don't go yeah. giving tech advice unless you're really fucking knowledgeable or really sure about what yeah. you're uh, fucking giving some advice on. That's all I mean. <laughs> this, this is very true. <laughs> that know? is absolutely a hundred percent true. You know? Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. These, these things, these things are dangerous and they hurt. Yeah, you you, you know, know you you, you, uh, you know you, uh, you've had a couple of fucking humdingers, right? You know. Yeah, I mean both my both my legs from the knees down are full of metal, so yeah. you know. Yeah, I have, you know, and it's just it sucks. Yep. <laughs> you know, but it is what it is. You know, I, I made my choice. Yep. I, I, mean, I mean, yes, neither and neither accident, of course, was my fault, but you know. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I'm still the one paying the price because yeah. the choices I made. So you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a guy on yeah. a on a little motorcycle doesn't always win when it comes up against a you know a no, they couple don't. couple of tons of metal, uh, you know, in an enclosed they don't, you shelter. Don't win. Yeah, yeah. You don't win. <laughs> you you don't, know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've had a couple two big losses, but you know, it's all good. Yeah, I'm still here, and I'm still you know doing what I'm doing. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, and more power <sighs> to it. Uh, God, I have so much crap in my shop. <laughs> 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 Well, l- let me let you go so uh, so that you right. can uh, so good. that you can get back to that. I'm gonna just shut this off yeah. here again. Thank you so much for coming on right. today. This of was course, awesome. Man. It's my honor, man. I appreciate it. Same here, man. Hold it's on. A great time doing it with you, buddy. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs>